live at Neves Knives Live, live with Neves Knives. Bang, Neves Knives. I'm Jared with my lovely wife, Kara. Yellow. We are live on YouTube. We are doing a live debate tonight. We have a whole bunch of little things to debate about. Some of them really aren't, I don't know if they're debatable, but then we got some, you know, typical debate things to debate. Where's the video? And also, I'm uh, I'm hoping maybe you guys can even come up with a couple things to debate, those of you that show up to the live. And hopefully this is entertaining for the people that do watch it later. We have a lot of great content coming up this week and some awesome giveaways coming oh up too. Oh my god. What? There's an apple in my pocket. She's got an apple in her pocket. Also, we got a package back that we had out on loan. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that sexy ass logo. See it? Oh, yeah. What's up, Floydian? See it coming in? I that do, F? I do. Y'all is... see that F? Check I'll tell out. You, I'll tell you one thing, Floydian. That's a sweet ass logo. Guys, everyone look at it at Floydian so 214's logo. I'll say this too. That's a logo I recognize. It's yeah, it's like when I see it, I sexy. I know right away that's Floydian. I don't even have to read his name to know it's Floydian. I didn't Okay, which is a good, that's what it. you want. It, I love when it's big and you can actually see that the gray in the background is actually a moon. Right. That, it's, it's a mo f and That's why it's cool that you went with that shade. Look I at think, my two logos are together. I think <laughs> possibly if it was the lighter shade, it would the, it would come up better. But the moon we did would, go with the lighter shade. I, I'm saying the lighter, lighter, even lighter. I'm saying, but the then the uh, the moon wouldn't be so pronounced. What's up, Andrew? Um, tomorrow, Andrew, I'm possibly going to be mailing out tomorrow. Just so you know, since you're live, I was gonna uh, message you. I'm not a thousand percent. It might be Friday, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be tomorrow because I got to get some stuff back to uh, Lavender Pants also. Um, so we did. We got the package back from EDC Journey that you see in the comments right now. What's up, EDC Journey? And he threw in a couple little um, presents for us. One of which, that because I didn't know that Vermont was like... Uh, you know, one of their things is syrup. Isn't one of their things like grape jelly too? Like Concord grapes. I have grapes? no idea. It's Concord. Skiing, I think. Or maybe the no, maybe the awesome. capital of one of them, New Hampshire, but not is Concord. One of them. Okay, go ahead. Anyways, so this damn syrup. This is the best syrup I've ever tried in my life. You can already it's see so how good. much is missing. We literally just got it like a few hours ago, and it's already done. This stuff you can drink. This stuff. It is so good. I just I had it, it on a burrito, um, like a breakfast burrito. I had it Holy on It, it was, was so, so good. good. Like, I honestly, and I'm not just saying this because he gave it to us. Like, honestly, I was expecting it to be like, kind of like, like maybe Cracker Barrel syrup mm -hmm. or something. Just regular mm -hmm. syrup, just some, you know. But then I tasted it. I was like, wait a sec. There's something about this stuff. And I kept tasting I was like, man, this is good. It just kept making me eat more. It was so, yeah, it's so it's good. it's really good. Yeah, it is definitely incredible, Floydian. Holy cow, incredible. And then he also threw in a gold... It's right there. A gold Trump coin. <laughs> That's oh hilarious. my god. Look at him. His neck looks I don't know ridiculous. if you guys can see it, but it's his head. His see. neck looks see dumb. This comes up. <laughs> it looks so fat. I think it's hilarious. Um yeah, you can see it. <laughs> um yes, thank you, EDC Journey. We are definitely that that syrup is definitely gonna get put to good use. Probably fairly Ooh. quickly. Um so I'm, I'm going to, in here just a few minutes, I'm going to tell a story for the beginning of this. Hopefully it's funny to you guys. Um, I think it's kind of funny now that I look back at it. It definitely wasn't funny during. But I'm going to tell that story, and then we are going to do some debates. So I got a whole bunch of things written down. Some of them are goofy, some of them are somewhat serious, but mostly goofy. But, um, but then, like I said, there are some uh, somewhat serious ones that... Probably who gets what side is we are going to go one after ah. another. So she gets to pick, then I get to pick, then she gets to pick. Kind of like that. I don't think we're going to do all the the conversations, all the things I have written down, because some of them were kind of just like spur of the moment. Like, ah, you know, so I don't know. 
but we'll see how it goes. Lavender ha! pants. That's hilarious. Yes, of... I am definitely the master debater. <laughs> you get it. I. You get it. Come on, come on. Um. Oh, da, 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 what was I about to say? Um. I need a knife. So. I've been testing out this new th this uh. Do you want to say something, baby? I'm sorry. What? Whoa, Mark! Hey, Mark. bud! Oh, we Thank got you. a number one fan. I always like to act out the stickers I get. It's That's my, awesome. It's my thing. Yeah, don't find weird ones. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard when people do the weird ones, and I'm like, how do I do this? Anyway, you uh, ever send a sticker? I always try to act it out. So I've been testing out. And thank you, Mark H. Also, yes, thank you very um, much. That's awesome. Thank I you. love your logo. You guys have Speedy no Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez. Oh yeah, yeah. No, me and him have been talking um a lot lately. Um what was I about to say? Um Yeah, no, you guys have no idea how much like these the donations in the lives, how much they help us, like so much. Like whoa. Like whoa. Um, so I've been testing out these this thumb uh the quick stud. And I've never tried one out before, but I've always wanted to get one. Like, I've seen them, you know, around and uh, had them in my cart and then just never pulled the trigger. And I don't know why, because they're so cheap. You can get them, like, for, like, less than 10 bucks, like, 7 bucks. Some places will sell them to, like, 3 or $4. I don't know how long they'll take to get there, but regular places, like, 7 bucks. But they go on so fast, so easy. They send you the little tool. You just put it right on. It's real simple. And I'm testing it out, so I'm going to do a review on it. Um, probably in the next day or two, I did get the Kukri video, or we did, we got the Kukri video done, it's fully edited, it's ready to go up tomorrow, put in a lot of work on the damn video, a whole lot of work, hopefully you guys see it, oh There's no, I got any, buffering, there was a baby buffer, it was a baby bee. We better not deal with this today. Um, if we deal with this today, I'm like just going to break everything. Why are you looking at me? You know why I'm looking at you. I didn't do it. You know exactly why I'm looking at you. I didn't do anything to you. Um, It was just a baby one. Everyone, everyone. My apple. No. Listen, guys. If this is going to start doing this, then, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll just redo a live tomorrow because I'm not putting up with this again. I hate when this happens, and um, we don't have to have it happen, but it's probably going to happen tonight. Um, I did upload a video, but that was hours ago, so hopefully it stops. Usually, it's weird, like, the beginning of it kind of does it, and then, like, after a little bit, it just stops. That's the way it's been before. I don't know. That one video, though, man, it would not. The whole time it was doing it. It's not bad. Let's relax. That's why you just need an apple with your face. <laughs> I am using my face. Like, um, the like the rest of humanity. Um, I do, too, seems logical. I definitely blame Canada for this shit. <laughs> oh, man, um, the Koenig areas, guys. The healthiest Whoa! part of the apple is the seeds. However... Did you know poisonous. in large quantities they are poisonous? I did at one point in life actually know the um, the number I think of seeds that it would take, but I can't remember now. Yeah, it's it's actually it's a lot, but it's, it's a not lot, as much as you yes, think. Yes, that's what it is. It's not as much as you think. And um, you have to eat them all, but I think... Oh, the, wait! Hi, Lindy. I'm sorry. I'm not used to your name being different. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's up, Lindy Lou? But um, I think also, though, that... When like the way your stomach breaks down the seeds, it's um like you you can extract it or something, but like to actually eat the seeds and get poisoned, it takes a pretty large amount of seeds. Like you'd have to get a lot of apples because can there's we, not that many seeds. Can in we all just apple. take a moment to acknowledge how thin of slices this uh this wee vapor <laughs> can handle? Like. Literally, that's ridiculous. And I'm not even, that wasn't even a try. You know this is a live, so they can't really see it that good. Um, I'm just saying. So, Andrew Tool said, is he the only person that got a Koenig Arius in hand and sold it in 30 minutes? He did not like it. I have to say, I do like it. Now, do I think the hype is overhyped? 
Um, possibly. I, I do like it a lot, though, and I understand. Are you having fun? Look at it. I see it. It's this an ample. It's not the damn hard. This was a request, okay? They said, cut it with a knife, and I please the fans. But I do like it a lot. But to be honest, I don't know how much they go for, and that's the big question I have. What is it? How much is it? And uh, I know I don't know which generation this is. Since it's the flat grind, I feel like it's the older generation. I know the year is 2018 on it, so but I don't know. Was it Gen Two? Right? I'm not. I don't know. I guess I don't know enough about it. I'm going to talk to him probably this weekend. Talk to Eric, and then we'll talk about it and discuss it. I think it's a Gen Two though, if my research is correct. Um, style 57. I don't know what that means. Uh, what? There were two main reasons. What were they? I'm curious to know, Andrew. Andrew said there's two main reasons why he did not like the Koenig Aries. I and, could see it. Um, what's up, Ian? I think it's a Gen 2. I think it's a Gen 2, too. Um, I don't know how many Gens there are. Isn't there four? I, see, I don't know if enough about them, and the reason why is because... You're poor. I'm poor. But, um... I do have a couple complaints, but you guys are just going to have to watch the damn video to find that out. Shit. Can I tell them a funny story? What? Tell them a funny story. I got a funny story after this, too. Go so, this on. is a funny... It's real, It's a short story, but this is a funny story about when we were first filming. So, back when we were, like, new, thing. new, new at filming. Okay. That's not a knock against the knife, just my issue. All the internal milling on the knife that large made it feel cheap to me. Okay. I think it's on the heavier side. Well, I don't think so. I like I said when I when I felt it, I don't feel like it's heavy at all. But I know what he's saying. When you when you get a big knife, sometimes you expect like and I kind of understand this where people like say if I hand somebody that doesn't know much about knives, I hand them two knives. One's heavier than the other. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time. They're going to say the heavier one is more expensive, like as if the weight equals value, when that's not true. But for some reason, we all kind of equal that in our head, even though it's kind of the opposite in the knife world. Usually, you had the Gen 4. Wow. Um, yeah, I... I, I understand why you thought it was lighter. It's probably lighter than this one, too, because that one's the hollow grind. And that would take a little weight off. But, yeah, I don't know. This one's got some weight, though, but in a good way. I feel like this one would be, like, the weight that you would like. Um, not yeah, positive, Yeah, the one obviously. we have is, I, I, I wouldn't, it does not have that cheap light feel. No, like. not at all. Um, um, can I tell my story? Yeah, it must have been really disappointing. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, so when we were, like, newer at recording and, like, making videos and stuff, um, do you have, a, uh, like, a rag for me for this? Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you're not used to, uh, kind of watching your mouth in a sense, and we don't really curb ourselves for the camera, but when we were first starting out, you know, definitely, and hearing everything about YouTube, we were trying to be somewhat careful and respectful, and you know, because people didn't know us that, so some of the things I might say now on camera, I wouldn't have said then, just I was because. saying this to Lindy Lou earlier, actually. So, anyway, check this out, so. I still would never say this, um, like, on camera, just because you don't know how people are going to take stuff. But in knowing who's here and stuff, I just want to share with you guys. I think it's funny. Um, so we were doing a video, and we decided to use a, um, a $20 bill as um, a size comparison, as, like, a real-life, like, object size comparison. Because everybody knows the size of a bill. And so Jared throws down the $20 bill on the camera as we're recording. It wasn't a 20 I think it was a dollar. It was a $20 bill. I remember this perfectly. I think it was a dollar. It wasn't. It was a $20 bill. Okay. And Jared throws it down and he goes, we're using this because, you know, everyone knows what a $20 bill looks like. And I'm in the background and I just go, unless you're poor. <laughs> <laughs> And Jared got mad at me. Well, he didn't get mad, but you know we had to we had to cut that one. Yeah, out. we had to cut that we out. We had to cut that one out. Oh, it sounded that, so bad at the it time. It did. It sounded like because like if you and, and, if you were legitly poor, it sounds like like you're talking shit kind of. So we were like, yeah, we don't want to do that for our first video. Start talking shit. Well, because the thing was is like we're super poor, especially back then too. And so like you know me saying it, I'm not thinking that because I'm part of the 
that group. Right. So I'm not thinking right. anything weird. Plus, it's a joke because right. clearly everyone knows what a $20 bill looks like. But it's just funny, the stuff that comes out of your mouth that you don't think about. And then, you you know, because you're, you're still in your house alone. But and there's this camera. <laughs> Andrew said Style 57 is the name of the milling on the Koenig areas. Now, I did not know that, and thank you, now I do. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, like I was telling Wendy earlier, like, when you first start, you do, you're very aware of what you might look like, or you try to be aware of what you might sound like, what you might look like to other people's perceptions, because, you know, their perception's not yours, and sometimes you might come off, like, with something as a joke, and we still get this. Okay, hold on. All the time. But thank you, Lindy, because I... We talked I, about not doing this, but go I ahead. I actually <laughs> agreed, no, this is about this, though, but I, I actually agreed, um... At the time, I remember we were bickering about whether it actually was offensive or not. Right. And I was saying that it wasn't because clearly everyone knows what a twenty dollar bill. But looks at the like. end, we wound up agreeing that it was though because like it wasn't yeah, about the twenty dollar bill. Anymore. It was. A, <laughs> oh, you're so full of crap. <laughs> no, it wasn't about the twenty dollar bill. It was about the poor remark. It had nothing to do about the, the twenty dollar cool. bill. Yeah, that's all it was about. It had nothing to do with the twenty dollar bill. But anyways, but then after a while. Um, going back to what I was saying, like that, uh, you know, people's perceptions might be different than yours and you're trying to, to, you know, not sound bad and not, you know, like somebody else's perception could take you wrong. People still do that to us now. So, but after a while you wind up realizing that you have a bunch of people in the community that have your back, that like, you no matter what, and you start not caring because then the other people that do take you wrong, it doesn't matter. Because you already have the ones that have your back. And I'm not saying that, like, that um, that the other people don't matter or anything like that. All I'm saying is that you feel more accepted. And then you realize that it is your weirdness. It is the goofy things you do. It is the weird things you say that makes you you. And without that, you're fake as fuck. Like, so, it winds up being that you're putting on a show rather than just being yourself. And... I said going into this, like, we're not going to do that. We're going to just be ourselves. If people like us, they like us. But that still doesn't stop you from thinking about the way somebody's going to perceive something. And we still get it, like, all the time. Like, I joke, like, one time, man, I, you wouldn't believe how many comments I have on one video. And it doesn't make sense. Me and her have watched it many times. And people leave me comments making it sound like I'm treating her like shit during the video. And, like, but we watch it and we can't figure out why. And, but it must be obvious to them because it's the same damn comment over and over. <laughs> right. Ah, ah. I dropped something in my shoulder. What's up, Knife Whisper? Um. Exactly. Nice to see you to embrace for sure. All right, Lindy Lou. Lindy Lou, if you guys don't know, is the Knife's Meow. Go check her channel out. She's got a new channel. Um, I'm not TKM. sure. TKM. I, I love that. TKM. That's such a good initial. She TKM. is flying. She's almost to 100 subs already, which is insane. That's bullshit. I think it took us... It feels like I it took us a fucking I said that. I said, I'm so jealous of you. It took us like six months to get 100 subs, but I'm very happy for you. And that's what I was saying before. You need to make a channel. The community knows you. The community loves you. Let them uh, embrace you. So she's almost to 100 subs. Okay. Let's get her to 100 subs. Apparently, one of our debate topics is going to have to be dogs versus cats yeah. because everyone keeps yeah. saying that one. So. But we already know which one will win. That's the problem. No, but it's the... Okay, this, I know. Let me, I almost said puppies me, versus kittens because that one's harder. Let me... True. Let me lay some ground rules, though. It's not about we know which one would win. It's about which one of us is the better debater. Because <laughs> I promise you, if if you could... Oh, I promise you I'm listen, the better debater. Listen, if you, uh, if you take a, a subject like cats and dogs... They could decide that, Thanks, Ian. that a Sorry. certain side won the argument. It's not about I know. whether they think a dog is better than a cat. It's right. about who laid out their point right. better. Right. I and it. they're going to be the deciders of these debates. Yeah, because on this one, on that specific thing, there's no way I could change your mind. No, it's not yeah, about that's what that. I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. But it kind of is. That's the point of a debate is to change somebody's mind. Like, 
you know, that's the point. Right. But or to get somebody to realize the other side of the argument. Like, if I had one argument and you had another, I you might know the one side, but not the other, as well as your side. Absolutely. But because um, there's two of us and we don't get to decide, you may very well be arguing for a side you don't actually believe in. So it's about your skills and how well you can actually argue and relay a point, even if you don't necessarily believe in it. Right. Because you might right. not. We're going to have to come up with some sort of coin flip maybe we'll use the Trump coin, to determine what side we, we get to argue. Because if we do cats I versus said, dogs... I said that what we'll do is we'll do... You get to choose one, I get to choose... Like, we'll just go back and forth. You oh, pick so which, every other time you we pick switch which side picks? You want. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so, um... Lemon, thank you for stopping in. And yes, everybody, if you do like our content, give us a thumbs up. And if you don't, give us a thumbs down. But let us know why. Um, somebody else was just stopping we by love for constructive criticism. Eric for EDC, sorry for the late reply, uh, but thank you for stopping by as well. Is um, he just stopping in? Yeah. Oh man. And then yes, I'm left handed. And how do you get Neves Knife stickers? You get Neves Knife stickers by emailing us or hitting us up on Instagram. I we sell them for two dollars a pop. Woo! Whoa, Isaac! Thank oh. you, brother. Thank you. How are you gonna do that one? <laughs> What does he do with I his need hand? Your help. He does something with his hand. This ain't going so well. Just do it. I have to do it. It's yeah. Put your hand up and wave. How's it going? <laughs> Come on. See, I always do them, guys. Yeah, not worth breaking the bank. That's a cool. Hey, yeah, he did that Ron on purpose. Burgundy has a good <laughs> quote about dogs. I don't remember his quote oh, about dogs. I don't remember it. I know he has that dog Baxter though. He loves it. So Baxter. Um, I was going to tell a little story because I, the way I was thinking about this live was that you know we wait for people to come in and we didn't want to do like an entire uh, video of just debate. So I was going to tell a story in the beginning and then debate like right after, and we'll start the debate. Now the story I'm going to tell, it's um, it's funny now to me, but it obviously wasn't in the you know when it was happening, and it was a time I ran from the cops. Um, and you kind of got to have a little bit of background. So now it's okay for me to kind of talk about it. And I'm not, um, like snitching on myself in any way because incriminating yourself? I'm not incriminating myself in any way because what I wound up, what I was, um, cause I had a warrant. Okay. So I had a warrant for my arrest, but in the end it wound up being that it got dropped out of court. So, um, anyway, so the cops are after me. I have a, a a pretty big warrant and at this point I um I basically jumped court so I didn't show up to court so they um they gave me a warrant for like like two hundred fifty thousand dollars like it was a crazy fuck thing and here it's you had to pay ten percent of that so it'd been twenty five thousand dollars for me to get out of jail and um so I was running from them and so where I lived I lived at the end of a um a road so I was at a dead end and I'm with somebody, and I turn the corner. Right when I turn the corner, I see my block is just covered, riddled with cop cars. I already know what they're there for. And I can't turn around now because, you know, they, obviously there'd be a car chase. So I said, pull into my neighbor's house, right? And they're surrounded my neighbor's house too, but we're the two houses at the end of the dead end. So when we pull in to my neighbor's house, I get out and act like my neighbor. <laughs> and I start walking up to the door. I already know they're going to know it's me. They're going to see it's me. Um, I've been through a bunch of crap with these officers before. I already know they know what I look like. But I'm still going to take my shot, you know. So I um, so I get out. I start walking to the door. And they see me. They yell my name, whatever. I book it. So I start running. Well, they have dogs with them, too. And... Um, I know I'm not going to be able to outrun the dogs. And there's only one way to outrun dogs, and that's fences. You jump fences, and you repeat if, if you're in a neighborhood with fences. I was luckily to be in a neighborhood <laughs> with fences. So I jumped the one fence, and I kept going. They thought that I jumped the fence, and I, I like hid in the backyard. That was the one thing that gave me a little bit of an opportunity or a little jump. So I jumped the fence, but jumped the next fence, and just kept jumping and kept running. And... Um, they're swarming, they're, um, they, you know, like I said, they have the cops released, and then, uh, I'm, I'm running, and 
my sister winds up finding out because I wound up having to hunker down in this area because what they do is is they they usually will run on foot, chase you on foot, while another cop is circling the area with the car. So they're able to get a big area at one time. I already knew that. So I'm waiting for the cop car to come around, and uh, I see him come around, you know, and as he comes around, you know, I move a little bit farther. Well, my sister winds up uh, texting me because she, she hears that, like, I'm running from the cops. And um, she's worried about me, whatever. So she texts me, and she says, are you okay? And I'm a smart ass, and I text back, I said, uh, they can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Um, <laughs> it, I know, it's so stupid, it's so stupid, but today she still laughs about it, you know, like that that's what my remark was. And uh, then I get a call on my, or no, wait, not yet. Okay, so my aunt winds up showing up to my house because she hears that they're at my house, and she's going to try to prevent them from entering my house, because they don't have a warrant for my house, they have a warrant for me. So, but you know, they're fucking cops. They'll do whatever. So to stop them from going into my house and destroying my shit, she shows up and also she wants to stop them from, you know, shooting me or whatever, anything like that. So not saying that that would have happened because it wouldn't have. Um, I would have never allowed it to get to that point, you know. Um, anyway, so she gets there and they're like, I'm not that far yet. I'm really not. She finds out pretty soon, like, that this is happening. Anyway, so she, um, she gets there, and then they start telling her that, um, that to tell me that they have the dogs, and if I don't give up, that, you know, that they're going to let the dogs get me. And she looked right at, the, at them and says, he don't give a fuck about those dogs. He's the dog whisperer. Like, because I'm a dog trainer. And she's like, he does not care about them dogs. And that just, like, totally, like, blew everything that they had. They were going to try to fear me out with the dogs. And um, I wound up making it to a spot and uh, making a call and um, getting somebody to come get me. I uh, called a family member. They called somebody else. Met up with the location while I'm getting picked up. They didn't catch me. Okay, so I got away. Then uh, about, uh, a few days later, Okay. Oh yeah. Mind you, one of the reasons why I'm around too is my dad just passed away. I I'm trying to make it to his funeral. I'm willing to turn myself in, but I want to make it to his funeral. His funeral was in two days. So at this point, I just need to make it two more days. And um, and I didn't want to be locked up during it. You know. Anyway, so they wind up coming to my house now, and I hear that they're that they're there, right? And I know at this point they're fucking mad, right? They're angry. I know it. Because they didn't catch me. And they do not like losing a foot chase. So they come to the house. I know they're coming in no matter what. They don't have a warrant to come in. But I know they're going to figure out a way to come in. So I had already preset a spot in my house. That was uh, under like. So I had a basement. And there's a crawl space down there. But you would never know it was down there. there was a, I um, made a hole in the wall underneath the stairway. So if you walk down the stairs and you turn, there's a closet. And in that closet, there's the, the concrete wall. And it's just the same concrete wall that goes across the basement. Well, I uh, had a, um, a cinder block busted out. Well, I made that little hole so I can get down in there. And it was really big inside there. But I made it to where after I got in, I could close, not close it all the way, but make it to where if they looked, they wouldn't think anything. They would just think it was just the, the, the wall, you know. So... They see me, and then all of a sudden I disappear. And even the people in the house didn't know I did this. I had other people in the house. They thought I was fucked. Like when the cops went down in the basement, you know, with the dog and everything, they never came out with me. And, like, the people that were there were like, what the hell? Like, where did he go? You know, like, they're so confused, too. <laughs> it was about, like, an hour later. Um, About an hour later, I... uh. I come popping out, and they're, like, so confused, like, where the hell were you, you know? And I was just smiling, you know, I felt good that, you know, I got away. Which, really, this is sad, you know, but it was, it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. So then, how did they catch me? Because they did wind up catching me. So, I had a ladder on the side of my house, and um, I was sleeping on my couch. And they used my own ladder against me. They took my ladder, propped it up on my house very quietly, 
climbed up there, and while I was sleeping on my couch, they caught me in the window. And see me in the window, and they're like, don't you run, motherfucker! They pointed guns at me, they are about to kick my door in, blah, blah, blah. So I just gave up, I said, all right, you know, because I was never going to let it go to the position of where, like, the, I'd get shot or anything like that. Um, you know, as long as I was running with my back to them, you know, it was, I felt okay. You know, I was never going to fight with them or anything like that. If they caught me, they caught me. So they caught me. So, you know, I gave up. And that was literally the day before my dad's funeral. I think it was a day or maybe 48 hours before. So I wound up going to court. And uh, I told the judge basically what happened and why I was running. And he said, if I could prove it, that he would let me out of jail for right then, you know. And I couldn't figure out a way to prove it. And shout out to the fucking public defender that saved my ass that spent like an hour struggling to find the information of that my dad passed away and that his funeral was right then and literally it was happening while i was in court and he struggled he found it figured it out showed the evidence to the judge and the judge let me out and shout out to him because he did not have to do that most public defenders wouldn't do that um mm -hmm. and he definitely did so what an awesome dude for believing me too because a lot of people lie about that stuff i think he could just tell her i'm not lying but now when I look back at it, you know, the, the grand scheme of things is sad of why and everything. But the actual story of running from them that time was pretty funny. I got a couple other ones, but we'll save that for another day. So I thought it was a pretty funny story to tell. Anyways, let's get to the debates. Um, was Nero Knives in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate. Um, uh, I think you're talking to sharp thinking when you said that. Jared, you would be the best worst at hiding the Easter eggs. I'm the best at hiding Easter eggs. Just so you know. I have a big family, so we hide Easter eggs every year. Um, how did we get to this conversation? I like to tell stories sometimes. So I'll just... Hey, Andrew! Thank you, Whoa. bud! Dang, story time with Jared. Yes, please. Thank you. See, I like to do story time every once in a while, and I tell a funny story from my past because I do have a pretty crazy past and a lot of which i can't tell on this platform but a lot of stories i can and it gets funny you know um sharp thing just joking i love Vinny. i do too um i actually with Vinny, i have like a love hate relationship for him i don't know him at all i don't know him but i used to watch his videos all the time because he doesn't really post that much no more but he posts every once in a while and he used to post a lot and even though I watched all his videos, every single one, and his videos attracted me, I always felt like he was a dickhead, though. And even if he's watching right now, he sees this later, you know, it's nothing against him because then when I started doing videos, I started watching and realizing how big of a dick I looked like. And then I kind of felt like empathy for him, like thinking like, ah, oh, he's probably a really cool guy and he just comes off that way, kind of like I was, so. Um... Storytelling is definitely a talent. I hope it came out right because I feel like I left a bunch of parts out. I probably did. I probably left a lot of parts out, but it's okay. Um, oh, nobody would find those eggs, but eventually... They, yeah, I, the, the little kids, they start begging me to help them usually because they can't find them. No, you got to put them where they can see them except for that golden egg with the money. That's the one you got to hide good. Rogers peeking storytelling. Olin Rogers, peak storytelling ability. I don't know who that is, but I love when somebody can tell a good story and actually put you in the place. I don't think I did that story justice, but I'm getting better at telling stories on this platform. Just like I want to get better with reading comments out loud and answering them, you know, like with a beginning, middle, and end. Because sometimes I'll read a comment and I'll say the answer, not realizing that somebody's watching it later and has no idea what I'm talking about when I just answer a question. So I want to get used to reading the comment and answering it. Okay. All right, the nice meow, yeah, I agree. I would be a good storyteller if I didn't trip over my own words. I'm a much better writer than a speaker. Yeah, I, I do the same thing. So speaking yep. of tripping over yep. words, uh, I don't know why this reminded me of it, but I had an interesting experience at work today. I had a, um, a guest walk up, a uh, young, young guy, you know, maybe lower 30s, upper 20s, tall, you know, decent looking, healthy, all these things, right? nothing out of the ordinary um and i wasn't paying attention to him i was helping someone else and when i was done with them i turned and looked at him and was like hi how are you doing or whatever as soon as i started talking to him he started throwing himself into massive tourette's tics um and i'm not talking about purposely like, 
Well, it's just that once conversation, I see what you mean. Okay, right, right. Triggered him to start right. doing it, That's what or he was doing it before, and I didn't notice. Right, but, but um, I'm not talking just about like a little like something. I'm talking about like That's huge sad. things. That sucks. I know, and um, I, I have you know dealing with so many different and unique people every single day. I have a pretty decent talent at um. Being able to ignore something unique about someone without making it look like I'm ignoring it, but also without, um, you know, like making it obvious that I'm noticing it. So I just have kind of a good way, a good talent at treating people normally, no matter who, who or how they are. And, uh, man, I just, I felt so bad for him though, because, um, you could see that he didn't want it to happen and like, um, you know, he just trying to order his drink, but like I think that um, it was a good experience because I think that the way that I treated him and didn't, um, I don't know, he just he seemed comfortable, which I appreciated that I was able to make him feel that way. I but. told you the story about the time when um, I met this this guy with Tourette's, and uh, you know we're not making fun of anybody with Tourette's or anything, so I don't want anybody to take it the wrong way. So, anyways. I, I met this guy, but his thing was he nodded like this, you know, and, you know, we're, you know, you know how people say, what's up, right? What's up? That's what I thought he was doing. So he was like, oh, like no. this to me. So I'm like, this back does it again. I'm like, what's up? You know, we're back and forth doing this to each other. And then Natalie, my cousin, winds up telling me after a little while, he has Tourette's. And I'm like, fuck, I've been sitting here doing oh this fucking God. the whole time back to him. I felt like an idiot. I'm surprised he didn't just... No, he probably him. realized he was probably like, he's going to figure this out after a while. After the 20th. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. Okay, so Andrew said, Olin Rogers just tells stories from his life in super colorful, hilarious ways. His most famous one is Ghost in the, ho- in the stalls. Ghost about in the stalls. when he scared a guy in a Target bathroom. <laughs> that You know, that that's what I try to do. I try to tell stories from, like, my past and things, you know, that I've seen or done. And, you know, that's all I can do. I have a oh, funny... Oh, wait, thing. let me just finish that, that story I was telling with the cops, how I ran and got away, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when they finally got me, you know, after like three chases, whatever, they were they weren't pissed. I mean, I'm sure they were at the time, but the guy, one of the guys, like one of the people that I got away from, I guess he never lost a chase on foot. So he wanted to meet me. So they held me in the bullpen until he got there to meet me because I was the only person I ever got away from. I thought that was funny too. Um, I knew a guy with Tourette's in college. I didn't notice it until he pointed it out. His tick was pausing mid-sentence and holding his breath. Some people, I bet, don't even realize they actually have, like, a tick or something. I'm sure I have, like, a hundred ticks. I used to do this one. I used to do this. You know how I was talking about this nod? Yeah. I used to go like that a lot, but it was to crack my neck, and everybody thought I had Tourette's. Because this was when I was, like, in third Isaac's, grade. Isaac said, I had a teammate that had Tourette's. We'd rap along to music on the car ride to games. He could never get through the songs without ticks. I nicknamed him Remix. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> that is cute. Um, Alright, so do you want to uh, start with the debates? Yes. Yeah, so or do you think it's time? Me... There's a couple things here. Okay, couple right, things. so... For one, uh, while you were telling your story, I went through them and I'm I, sure you did. I crossed out all the ones that you I didn't, didn't like, like okay. and I starred the ones that I did like. Okay. And then I also added a couple. Okay. I starred all of mine. That's awesome. All of mine got starred. Okay. None I'm, got sure, I'm out. sure that's how it goes. <laughs> that's only because there's only like five though. Um, okay. Also, there was, um, I, and I think I think I have some good ones here, like this one. Hey, what was that thing called? The personality test, right? Yeah. So it seems logical sent us a thing with the personal- Literally, personality Literally, what test. are you doing right now? I was just, just going to say- You just went left. <clears throat> no, I'm just tell- telling the story. Mid right. asking you a question. Go ahead. Mid question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you like this one? I don't care. Do you like this one? Yeah, sure. And what about this one? Yeah, sure. Okay. I want just wanted to make sure you're okay, okay. with all this. So, okay, so- um. So seems logical sent us a thing about a personality <laughs> test, and we were going to do it live on here. We figured out a way to where we could both do it, too. But it was 57 questions, right? 57? 50. 50 questions, and it would have been very difficult and very hard for us to go through all the questions until the end. So we might take it later by ourselves and then just read the results. 
Um, but it seems like a really cool idea, and we wanted to do it with you guys so that you guys could do it too. So if we wind up doing that later, we'll put the link in or something like that. I don't know how to put links in before we start the video. Me either. I can only do it after. I'm not very savvy with this. Uh, What's up, Nate? What's up, Bryce? Bruce has been here since the start. Has he? Yeah, he literally was the second person to comment. Damn! Um, <laughs> bland. Um, okay, so, let's start. Okay, well... Um, How do you want to do this? You want to flip the coin and then... I thought we said we were No, just... no, I mean, to, to, who starts first? Because somebody has to rock, start first. Rock, paper, scissors. I don't want to do rock, paper, scissors. Why? Because I suck. Damn it, woman. Are we doing rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Yes. Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Okay. Okay, ready? Oh, I'm just, I was just saying that's ready? how we're going to do it. All right. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. Oh. Okay. Oh, wait, we're not doing best two out of three? No, no. Just one. <laughs> Suck. All right, let's. I can't. The only time I've ever won that. All right, so. In my life. Us. How long do you think we should give ourselves to, because. This is the thing. We're going to get intense about stuff, and we're going to go too long. So we need to set ourselves a limit, a time limit. Maybe and they then, should like, decide. Like, it's over. Get then, over it. Listen, <laughs> listen. And then, what? like, when the timer goes off, you just have to wrap up whatever thought you're on, and that's it. So I don't know what would be appropriate. I'm thinking maybe five minutes a topic. Because think about how many topics Not are five on. minutes. That's way too long. Too long? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think we should maybe do like one minute a piece, two minutes a piece or something like that. How about Let's just see how it goes. How about two minutes each? Let's just see how it goes. How about that? We won't, we won't stretch it out too long and we'll, we know how it goes. So well, I'm at least going to set a timer then for five minutes. You have so a timer that, right there. So that it, at max we don't go over that. You know what I'm saying? For the whole thing. Right. Okay. So I'm not like, oh my God. Okay. 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 So we have about two and a half minutes a piece. Um... And if one of us takes up a little bit more time, then whatever. I'm sure there's gonna always going to be one argument that's a little bit better than the other. Right. It's just we have to be able to – we have to have a, a, a way to um, – like you can't just keep going on and on and on and on and never let the other person talk. Yeah. So how are we going to de determine how we switch off? You give your story and I'll, you give your argument and I'll give mine. Okay. Let's do it like that. And to seems logical po seems logical's point, we need to not – be repeating ourselves true very true so once very a point true. is said don't yes. keep reiterating it yes. um okay so let's go ahead and start with your first category which is carbon fiber versus g10 which side do you want okay so i'm first um, yeah because you won rock paper scissors you chose rock paper scissors first you of all won. I, oh you, i won um i don't so i'll take g10 you want a G-Ton? I'll give you G-Ton. I'll take carbon fiber. Don't matter to me. Yeah. Okay. I'm carbon fiber. Okay. So you guys kind of have to decide, uh, you know, who you think wins the debates. Okay. And... Remember, guys, whichever side, that doesn't mean that, like, I, this is what I like or don't like or her. We're just giving the best argument for that side. Right. It's We're just trying to be good arguers. Yes. So... You guys carbon will. fiber, carbon fiber. I think carbon fiber is better than G10. One, it's lighter. It's a very strong. It's shockproof. They put it on Ferraris. So if it can go 200 miles an hour, then it can damn sure work on my knife. Um, it's very strong. And like I said, it is very lightweight. I don't know if it's lighter than G10, but I'm pretty positive that it is. So it's lighter and um, it's... Um, um, What's that called? Um, like shatterproof, unlike like fiberglass and stuff like that. It comes in different colors. It uh, has a beautiful look. You have different textures. You can uh, put milling in it. You can turn it sideways and get a different effect. There are multiple, several different effects. And now we are starting to add new chemicals and stuff to them to make them even more beautiful that G10 doesn't have. G10, you can't do all that. We are Put it this way. G10 sucks so bad. I can't believe I'm saying that. Sucks so bad that they're starting to mix G10 with carbon fiber just so it looks cooler. Um, and carbon fiber, um, yeah, like I said, you know, if, if if you can put it on a Ferrari, why not a knife? Go ahead. So, I gotta say a couple things. Okay, first of all, um, G10 is a wonderful, versatile material that offers lots of textures, Lots of colors, design options. Um, it's a good 
uh, cheap, easy price to work with compared to a lot of materials. And, but you, sir, are you going to pay attention? I'm listening to everything you're saying. And I'm just so, showing the people, the people that don't know, carbon fiber, g -tech. Keep going. I'm listening to you. And I lost my thought. You were saying it has textures. I'm going to cry. It has textures and different colors. You said different colors. I don't know what I said. Anyway. It's different colors. It comes in a multitude of colors. G10 is a versatile material. It's cheap to work with. Lots of, it's versatile, blah, blah. So, carbon fiber, though beautiful and though strong, the thing is, is that the price goes up so much more when you add carbon fiber to a knife just because of that uh, because of the Harder price range, work with. and I think because of what we would call hype. Okay, so yeah. demand is always going to increase price, that's and true. carbon fiber has that demand and that desire that's bringing the price up for unnecessary reasons. So G10, on the other hand, is versatile in a way that it can be on pretty much any work knife. It's something that you're not going to worry about being my precious and getting it scratched, right? It's something that you know is going to be reliable, that you can take to work, that you can handle getting dirty. You know, it's that knife that's going to be the one in your pocket every day coming with you to work. Um, and also, you can go all different price ranges with G10 because you can pair G10 with a cheaper steel and have a really nice budget knife. Or you can pair G10 with a higher end steel and, you know, get that strong steel, but your price isn't going to skyrocket like it would with carbon fiber on the exact same steel. Okay. We're talking about the difference between a $200 knife with carbon fiber versus like an 100 and, you know, maybe just like a $100 knife with the G10. Um, besides that, Though carbon fiber is strong, as you mentioned, and, you know, has all these great things, it's also a lot of times quite slippery. Now, I know that you can make carbon fiber in a, a rougher texture, but a lot of the knife companies, because they want that sheen and they want the beautiful side, they're making a lot of the knives very slick, which is a common trait to carbon fiber. And to me, if we're talking about work knife, most common knife, everyday carry knife, that's not particularly what I would look for. And uh, to my last point, you're a lot more limited with style. Yes, you can weave in other materials, but carbon fiber on its own is pretty limited when it comes to style and color choices. Okay, I'm not going to, I mean, there's 50 seconds left. All I'm going to say. Well, that was a pretty fair, like, yeah, yeah that's very went. fair. But all I'm going to say is that. Um, G10 definitely has a lot more limitations than carbon fiber because G10 is just, how? it's just a color. That's it. A color. So it's whatever color it is and that's it. Carbon fiber, you can add chemicals to it. You can change it. You can do lots of different things with it. You can make it different colors. You can add copper. You can add silver. You can add gold to it. You can do things like that. You can change the direction of the fibers. So there's definitely a lot more versatile than G10. Now, I do not know. Maybe one of these people in the comments know. What is stronger, G10 or carbon fiber? I would think G10, but carbon fiber is pretty you can't damn strong. Use them to help I don't your know. Argument. No, no. I'm, I'm going to say you won. Okay? How about that? You win. No, it's um, about them picking who did the better job at arguing, not if they like G10. Okay, well, you only have two more better. seconds left, so I give my... So you just get to end on it? Yeah, yeah, because you, you took so long. Um, <laughs> I did not take that long. <laughs> we literally each took half the time. All right, you guys, now... I didn't take half the time. Listen. There's no way I took half the time. Here's the thing, you guys. When, when you are doing these, like, deciding... You're not deciding what side you're on. You're deciding who you think puts yeah, no, a they better, can decide. better argument. Yeah, they can decide. Like, if they like G10 better, then that's what they should pick. Because they, that's what they like better. And that's... So, so, unless if they... That's the, not unless if like, to debate, like, though. I know that, but I'm just saying, though, like, if you already know, like, what you think is better, mm -hmm. right? Then that's the debate you're, like, listening to. That's your side. That's the side you're on. Now, if, like... I totally got murdered, right, in that debate. Then obviously pick who won the debate. But and you can even say, Carol won the debate, but I like carbon fiber more. Like you can do that. Do say whatever you want. All right. Okay, so, so we go have. Ahead. Let's hear it, people. Russ says carbon ten. <laughs> okay. Um, Ty uh, Isaac says. Uh, Fiend says carbon fiber should be stronger for the mass. Yeah, I think pound for pound it might be stronger, but I'm not sure. Like, I'm just saying, like, the same cut, the same thickness. If I start smashing it with a hammer, which one's going to last longer? I don't know, to be honest. I'd like to know. And, you know, it's kind of weird that we put 
carbon fiber in that category of, oh, this is an office type carry. This is a jet knife. This is a, this knife. So I'm wondering, did we do that because it is weaker? Or did we just do that because it looks nicer and it's more expensive? Because if that's the case, and we only did that because it's more expensive, then why wouldn't we want to put it on a work knife if we textured it? You know, if you put milling in it and it was textured and it wasn't slippery. Like, I know this is the fake carbon fiber, but, you know, why wouldn't we put it on work knife? Why are we so limited to saying that it's a jet knife, it's a, um, an office carry, it's for nice stuff, it's not for work knives okay so this i think i think the the um audience is coming down to a pretty close call here um so first of all i just i gotta read this comment. yes please please neve's knives neve's knives kara is right again oh of course we're just no not on the debate just joking not on the debate on how to determine who wins the debate we, oh, are yeah. we are deciding who won the debate not what our opinion already was no that's that what i said though i said say both okay that's why I said, say who you think won the debate and which one do you like more. Okay, so then we have some opinions. Uh, let's read some people's opinions on the, their opinions Super on the debate. Super Gold Nut, what 20, a cool name. 25, <laughs> yeah, he thinks you're ignoring him. Um, I'm not ignoring you. Yeah, he said that it, he, he said it's like we're not even here. Oh, I'm but sorry. Well, we well, the during, the de debate. Yeah, during the debate, <laughs> we're debating and then we'll look at the comments. Um. Yeah, so 25 to Knife says, I think it depends on the specs of carbon fiber. There are so many types and qualities. That's Zero true. void. Carbon fiber with three thirty thousand layers per inch would probably be stronger than G10. Okay. That's um, a good answer. I like that answer. It's <clears throat> actually an in-depth answer. All right. Um, Lindy okay. Lou, the nice meow, says carbon fiber is used in car parts and prosthetics, whereas G10 is used on playground structures and cutting boards. Both are structurally strong, but carbon fiber is more versatile. That is another damn good answer. Okay. So down here we get to people who kind of were more uh, voting on the actual debate. So Andrew Tool wait, doesn't wait, like let's... carbon fiber or G10, and he says Kara crushed me. Okay, so he says Kara. Super Gold Nut says Micarta for the win. Uh, Russ is saying very close, but Kara. Um, Sharp Thinking thinks it's a tie. Breeze says Kara. Thanks, Breeze. Um, and then, wait. Jared was argumentative than Jared was more argumentative than debate. Ooh, Ooh. Oh, low blow. <laughs> um. All right, so not I... none one. Thanks. All right, uh, cold <laughs> steel, golden eye sharp. I think size. Jared did pretty good. He wants to spend more time with you. So. Kara and a Jared. What? Okay, so we got four Karas and two Jareds. Um. Okay. I'm so, back. Had to post the daughter's interview. What's the con Okay, so we're to do we're going to the next debate. It seems like Kara won that debate, but That was hard too because it's it's not easy when you agree with the other side. Like when Jared's saying things that I agree with and I'm sitting there having to knock those points, it's difficult. You know, this is the question. Sometimes too. your 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 heart isn't in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But because that's sometimes like it. you like G ten better than carbon fiber. But this is the question. If I was going to give you the exact same knife, let's say Benchmade 940, right? They were both going to be $150, both of them. Would you get it in G10 or carbon fiber? Same price, same everything. The only thing different would be the material. Most if, people are going to pick carbon fiber. Because they think it's more expensive. Yeah, they think it has a They think they're getting value. more value, right. Yeah. I'm saying for preference. Okay, next one. Next debate. Uh, then you get to choose which side you want. But I kind of picked last time, to be honest. Um, yeah, you did. But what's the next one? The next one is um, Spidey Flick versus Thumb Flick. So let me clarify, because you're the one who wrote this. Are we debating whether or not it's better okay. or functional? Like, what are we debating? So, okay, so, like, say... What knife is it? Um, okay, this one right here. Say this knife, right? You can Thumb Flick it. But you can't really spidey flick it because the hole is blocked. I can also get the... Where's the techno? Oh, right here. Okay, so the techno. You can spidey flick this knife, you know, but let's say you couldn't, okay? And there was only the hole on this side. So you got a thumb flick or a middle finger flick. And you can only choose one side. You can choose to either have the thumb flick or the middle finger flick. Which one are you going to pick for your knife? 
Do you like the thumb flick better or the middle finger <laughs> flick? But that's just a question. What are you and I debating? We're debating which one's better, the middle finger or okay, the thumb. We can better? scratch this one out. I, I, like I said, I wrote down some, and it was no, literally like it. just like on it. the whim. I like it. I want to do it. Which one is better? Which one is more? There's a lot okay. of things. Okay, which one are you picking? Um, Am I picking right now? Yeah, because I, I kind of picked last no, time. No, go ahead, pick. No, I picked last time. Okay, so, okay so I'll go middle finger. Okay, Spidey Flick. Um, And then, went Thumb Flick, is that going to be... Actually, you know what? Can we do... Wait, yeah, so... Can change it? Can we do Spidey Hole versus Thumb Stud? So we already more, have that. I there. crossed it out on the other side because I thought okay, it was the same Okay, then do that. Do that. Let's yeah. do that one. Sp okay, thumb stud versus spidey hole. I'm picking yeah. spidey that hole. That way the two sides are a little, a little bit more different. Okay, uh, should I okay, go first? Okay, so I'll do thumb stud. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. go ahead. Okay, so the hole. Okay, so even though the Talk middle... Talk to me. Even though, okay, so the middle... you're fighting. Okay, so the middle finger flick yes. is more harder to learn than the thumb flick. Harder. What did I say? More harder. So, the thumb flick is easier to get down than the, the middle finger flick. But once you get it down, your the leverage you get from a middle finger flick is very strong and very reliable. And you almost feel better doing that once you learn it. You know, just like a lot of things. Also, with thumb studs, they get in the way of the cutting path. So, when you're cutting things, they're going to be in the way. With a hole... There's nothing in the way. You can just blaze right through it. Next thing, when you're sharpening, thumb studs can get in the way of sharpening. So then you got to worry about them scratching on the stone, or you got to worry about the clamp if you have a KME. You know, so with the hole, you don't have to worry about that. So you got two things that are out of the way and make it so much easier to use a, a, a knife with a hole in it. Now, next thing, the hole, you can do the spidey flick and the thumb flick with thumb studs you can do that but you're more limited to the thumb flick unless if you're really good you know then you can do the middle finger flick but um the spidey flick or, or no sorry the whole thumb hole the thumb hole or middle finger hole is just a little more versatile and it works with a lot more things considering that it's out of the way and there's nothing there that's my debate okay um, so I actually agree with a lot of your points. You can't do that. In <laughs> reference to sharpening and the, yeah, do you, do you the cutting path. Same knife, um, same knife. One has thumb studs, one has the hole. You always want to show them it right I'm when I start and get my watching. thoughts organized. They're watching. How about we show the things first why, next time? Why don't you get on cue and know um, that you're supposed to be doing the, the, okay. the thumb studs? So, though I agree with a lot of your points in reference to, um obstruction in the blade path right so you know cutting sharpening all those things i went i totally agree with that <laughs> however that's pretty much all i agree with and the reason why oh. Oh. is because oh. on basically everything else you brought up is relatively anecdotal between the two so okay you can thumb flick you can middle finger flick with thumb studs both work you failed i didn't both oh, work. Um, no, my finger just muted it's it at the end. So, um, both of those things still work. You can thumb flick, you can middle finger flick. Uh, I think you have to be equally as practiced to middle finger flick a hole as you do a thumb stud. In fact, I learned easier on a thumb stud than a hole. So I think that's really um, not a fact and more of an... Uh, it's debatable. Uh, yeah, it's debatable. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but on the... Not only... Um, is the thumb hole, uh, you know, a little bit boring compared to thumb stud? Because here's the thing. Both are fun to play with, right? It, from a fidgeting standpoint. a lot stand, of people would disagree standpoint. with that. Boring because what color can you make a thumb hole? No color because it's a hole. It's Shape. a void. You need different shapes. Um, That's what you get. You need different shapes. Okay, but you're still limited on that aspect. The thing shapes. is, you're not supposed to interrupt me. You know Shapes. That. You're not supposed to interrupt me. Go ahead. Keep throwing my line well, of hurry thought. Hurry up. You've interrupted me seven times, so I get 12 minutes back. Um, so, thumb studs, you can make different colors, right? That's something really cool you can do. You can go different shapes with thumb studs, different colors. But the biggest thing when it comes to anything on a knife is going to be function. And the thing is, is that I think thumb studs have a really high function when it comes to the fail rate and opening. I can more often than not, 
grip a thumb stud, open it with my thumb powerfully and easily more often than with a thumb hole. Sometimes with the thumb hole, because you have to dip your thumb downwards into the hole like that. Sometimes in certain situations when my hands are full, when I'm doing things, I've got a lot going on. It's easier to grip that thumb stud and fling it open. Um, it, you can't respond. I, um, <laughs> I saw you wanting no. to. So, um, for me, and I think for a lot of people from people I've gotten new into knives, the hole is a bit more intimidating. It's, uh, something they want to grab in two hand. It's not something that is easy to grip and fling open. So though the, you have that advantage on the sharpening end, a lot of thumb studs, um, can get in the way of the cutting path, but when they're appropriately placed and you have a lot of, um, cutting edge outside the thumb stud, it really shouldn't matter. Um, you know, and that's, that's my point. Okay, just to end it really quick, just to end no, it. No, you can't respond. I, no, I'm just ending with one last thing. Yeah, but you always get to respond to me, and I never, well, I guess I did get to respond to you. Yeah, you got to respond. Okay. So, also, pulling it out of your pocket, thumb stud snag, holes don't, and you I've don't. I've literally never had a thumb stud one, snag one time and one, in my entire life. I have. I had one earlier. I can show you right now. Look at this. Watch this. Watch this. Did you see that? Look what thumb stud you have on Doesn't here. matter. Doesn't matter. That, do, that Doesn't 100% matter. matters. I can do that with a lot of thumb studs. That is a removable Anyways, thumb so what do you guys think? <laughs> Kara isn't going to... I know, she keeps going, right? <laughs> She's very competitive. I, 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 I think Jared's points were better, to be, pers to be honest. Yeah, I personally... I like thumb studs and thumb well, holes. So to me, to in, in all reality, to me, it's kind of a tie. I like them both for different reasons. Sometimes a knife with thumb studs just feels good, right? It's just you get so much leverage. And then sometimes you get a, 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 a knife with a hole that just has so much leverage that you wouldn't want with thumb studs. Like these two right here, as soon as you guys, while you guys are writing, this is two of the same knife. One has a hole, one has thumb studs. And I love them both. I love the grind on this one more than this one, but um, I like that I can spidey flick this one. Jared won to my ear. Why don't you on read Andrew's? One. Out Andrew, loud. I'm giving the win to Jared. But dude, shut the fuck up when she's talking. Let her finish her points without interrupting. Well said. Um, I swear I heard you say you don't like holes in knives, Jared. No, you didn't hear me say that. Uh, flicking is cool, though. Whole weekends in the past. Jared won to my ear on this one. I like both. Um, Nate Cagle says, got to love G10 for a work knife. I totally agree. Uh, Josh says, I like a big fuller. Yeah, that's what I was kind of saying was that uh, with the holes, you have different shapes and stuff like that. Like, you're not just limited to a circle. So, and so, just like she said, you know, with studs, there's different colors, there's different shapes, different textures. Um, studs over holes, but not by much. Mostly because holes have to be placed properly and sized properly, more so than studs. Most don't get holes perfectly done. Spirited Whiskey says that. And I agree. Sometimes that happens with studs too, but you, you do have to have that hole properly done and the detent properly done. And if you do, it's amazing. So, like, if you said, like, the best thumb stud versus the best hole, I kind of think that's what we're kind of doing right here. Yeah. Like, the best of the best, not which one is better. Like, um, more times, I think. But just more of, like, the same knife, you know, if they were both equally yoked. Um, um so, you can sometimes... Pause, sorry, go pause, ahead. Pause, go pause, ahead. Pause. Go ahead. Um, so, so far, for the people who actually, um, like, picked a side, I believe it was basically 6-3 Jared. So, this one goes to Jared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Spirited asked to say the Misfit, which I put an edge on, and I put an edge. Is it hot over here? Is it's it hot. Is it really? Yeah. I'll step up. You usually get hot when you debate. No, I was hot before that, but maybe just me. I also put an edge on this bad boy. Review coming soon. Tanto. 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 I hate Tanto. Tanto. Reverse. Er, sorry. Cross cut. My card off. Beautifully done, too. Okay, so. Alright, so. Let's next go. question. 
How's the assassin treating you? Very well. I'll be honest, I haven't had much of a chance to use it because I'm trying to get these other reviews done because I got to get them out the door back to the owners. So I'm going to get to it probably after this weekend and really get to test it. You know, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I've been testing it or anything because I, I haven't. I haven't been able to really carry it yet, but I will for sure. All right, so let's do um, a non-knife one. Just for fun. Yeah, it is easier to do studs. I agree with that. Some holes, they just... Like you said, they don't place them right. I think the biggest thing isn't even placement. I think the biggest thing is placement, too, but is equaling the detent strength with it. Like, yeah, you, you can't have a really strong detent with a hole, and I found that to be a problem with some knives. Some knives do get it really good. Like, spider codes do get it good. Access locks with holes do very well. Because access locks don't have, like, strong detents. Because it's not a detent. Um, but, yeah. Like, the Koenig Arius, that's one thing. You do got to get used to it. Once you get used to it, you understand how to flick it. But um, if your finger's, like, on the lock bar of any sort, like, it's not going to come out. Okay. What's the next one, baby? So, I want to do a, um, a uh, non-knife one for this one. Okay. Um, but... I'm having a hard time deciding which one I want to do. I bet the Resenti nails it. There's some knives that just, they do really good. Even like this thing, the Tucson 195, this fuller is the best fuller middle finger flicking action you'll find. I mean, it's so sharp, it you it grabs you no matter what. I need it's to ask perfect. You um, when you say country versus city. Okay, so like country living versus living in the city. But country like... Like, well, country could be, like, are we talking about, like, middle country. of the damn nowhere type of country? Yeah, yeah. Like, out in the country. Like, okay. real country, country living. versus city. Yeah, like, living in the city versus living in the outback. Alaska, something like that. Like, real country. Colorado, real country. So, like country... Obviously, not, like, just living down south in some neighborhood. Even that, you could so say, is say way different than the city. So, I could say country mountains can count, too, right? For sure. All types of country versus yeah. all types of city. Okay, let's do it. You want to do that one? Yeah. Okay, which one do you want? Country. You're picking country? Okay, do you want to go first? Yes. I've been going first lately, so go on. Okay. All right, guys, we are doing country living versus city living. In... Not suburbs. Literal country. So, yeah, let's clarify what we're talking about. So, city being... In the city. Literal big city. Yeah. Not suburbs. Urban city. Well, even, city. you can even say in the suburbs in a city, because that's still the same thing. You're still in a city versus living in the country. We're just saying city living versus country well, living. wait, hold on. Because that, that changes things, though. Because if you're including... Oh, hold on, let me just say what I'm saying. If you're including suburbs in it, you get, you get an area where there's not... The, some of the downfalls to the city, like loud noises all the time, crowded areas, you know what I mean? You Suburbs, have, you can get you in that, have, the sweet spot. So if we're talking that, city... Babe, you still have it. If you're in the suburbs, to go anywhere, you gotta go through cities and, you know, like we have trains, buses, taxis, you know, like all the shit that a country doesn't have. That's my point. So city living, so I don't care if you're in the suburbs of the city, because you're still in the city. Everywhere you go, there's people. Every time you walk outside, there's people. You're living on top of each other. You can't walk outside and just fucking shoot your gun off. Like, I understand that. I just feel like that that the suburbs is a middle ground where it's kind of almost a landslide win for a debate because it's right in the middle of the two, but it's whatever. Not, it's not. Um, okay. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to take country. I'm going to go ahead and start the debate. Are you going to... Do you have something to say? Because I don't Josh, wanna... Josh just said that he just got the Tucson 195 and he loves the Sharp Fuller. It's so easy to flick with any finger. Sweet knife after the knees nice review. Isn't it sweet? It really is. Like when you get it in hand, you realize like, man, that's a lot of value in your hand. All right, let's go. Okay. Sorry. All right. So um, before I start talking about why country living Talk is to me. so great. I am. I'm just messing um, with you. Before you I start, yeah, I know you're talking to the camera. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Before I start talking about why country living is so great, I first want to talk about some of the um, downfalls of city living. Oh, do you? Yeah. Um, so city living, um, and I've, I, from my personal experience, have existed in both worlds in my life. So city living has a long list of downfalls. 
Um, to name a few, uh, when you're in the downtown limits of a city especially, you have consistent honking, consistent sirens, consistent noise in general. It's a very loud environment, even from within your house. Um, now, aside from the noise level being pretty much at a constant level, um, going anywhere, you're going to be coming in an interaction with people, you're going to be waiting in more lines, you're going to have a general crowded setting around you. Also, it's funny because you have this crowded setting, but in the same token, you probably are actually more likely to know less people. Um, you're more likely to be funneling yourself through crowds, but not actually knowing everyone. You know, your neighbors, you probably don't even know their names half the time. And that's something that you don't get with the city. Now, flipping to the plus, or, and, oh, I'm sorry, one more negative. There tends to be more crime in the city, just a fact. Um, flipping to the countryside, you have a, typically a close-knit community where everyone knows each other. Everyone has these other's backs when you're living in these small towns. Now, and I'm going to give myself a counterpoint. That can come with sometimes a little bit of gossip, a little bit of things like that. However, that's going to be anywhere where you have friends, right? Things happen. This is our tight-knit communities where you're able to go outside. As you mentioned before, you can go out. You can just shoot your gun up. You can do what you want. You're typically going to have a more private setting, a house on a big lot. You know what I mean? So, um... All in a nutshell, you are having a more wholesome environment where you get to really live out and do the things you want to do, and not to mention the absolutely beautiful scenery coming from nature rather than man-made structures. Go. Okay. I didn't know any time you ever lived in the country, but... I've been to the country been to the for country. long okay. periods of time. Right. I've, I've never, experienced me, both. You're not supposed to talk. You asked a question. You said talk. some I shit. I didn't ask a question. I made a statement. So, um, I've never personally lived in the country. The closest thing I've ever lived in the country was an hour south of Chicago. Um, so, but I've been to the country lots. I've spent weeks, I've spent months in the country because I have lots of family that lives in Mississippi, down south, and lots of other places. I have a huge family. Anyways, um, now, speaking about the sirens and stuff, down south, I, I stayed in a trailer and there was bugs louder than some of the sirens we have here. All night long, fucking dogs howling and bugs. And I guess it depends on what you're sleeping in, the type of house and everything. True. But there's lots of noises down south. It's just different kinds of noises. And when you get used to the city noises, it's just like when you get used to the southern noises. Now, you don't have the amount of work that you have in the city. So you have a lot more work. You get paid a lot more. Yeah, it's more expensive. But you definitely make a lot more money. And there's a lot more money to be made. And there's a lot better transportation. So you don't have to worry about going 11 miles just to go to a gas station. You can literally walk down the street and hit a gas station. Always. You can hit a corner store walking down the street. You have everything to your uh, disposal. So you always have uh, contact and then people. You always have people to help. You always have people around. And I'm not saying you don't have that in the country, but it's a lot further away. And then you have the train transportation that you can have. So you can literally go from one city to another very easily when you live in a city. You don't have that in the country. You have to, tr you know, you have to go in a car and go, you know, vast distances and stuff like that. No, you can't go outside and just shoot your gun. Yes, there's a lot more violence, but there's also a lot more people and stuff like that. So you get a lot more interactions. You get a lot more clubs and entertainment and stuff like that that you don't get in the country. So you're going to have a lot more things to do. You can definitely get a lot, like, a lot more bored in the country and stuff like that. You you have, um, like I said, the enter I see that. the entertainment aspect. You have a lot more work. You have um, a lot more of everything. Everything is just more. Some people might not like that, but some people do like to have that because they're thinking about money, family, and working to provide and always having that and never being without that. Now, in the country, if the local factory goes down, everybody's out of work. Do I get my quick, like, rebuttal thing? If you want to. Yeah. Uh, I'm about done, so. Um, okay, well, I just want to make two quick points. Uh, you brought up money and you brought up family. Why is it stopped? Because I just stopped it because you're oh, done. Oh, you don't want to run out of time. I I'm paused it for you. I'm just joking. You always do this right when I'm collecting my thoughts. You want to say <laughs> some shit. I'm just messing Damn with it. Calm <laughs> down. Calm okay, down. Okay, so you brought up two points. Yeah. You brought up money yeah. and you brought up family. Yeah. For one, yes, 
the co- the wages might be higher in the city, but so is the cost of living. I said that. Okay, so down south, or I'm not just down south, but most country areas, the cost of living is a, a lot, lot less, lower, yeah. but it could be in a state still with a high minimum wage, so sometimes you make out in that aspect. All right, Illinois has a high minimum wage, but if you go down south, the cost of living is much lower than the cost of living near the city. So yeah. you can make on that aspect. That's why a lot of people work in the city and also, live in the country. Also, in terms of raising a family, raising a family in an urban environment is definitely not going to be as good as raising a family in a country environment. Depends. And the reason why is because, fact, crime rate is higher in urban environments. I don't care which one you pick, it is. Okay? Yeah. Um, also, the other thing is, being in a country environment with a family, you're more likely to get your kids in smaller schools where they're getting more attention, right? They're having less interaction with strangers, less interaction with friends that you don't know. You're more likely to know the families, know the parents, etc. So okay. I just wanted to say those There you things. go. Good argument. All right. All right. Who won? Who's next? You decide. Have you ever seen that? That's from that uh, epic rap battles of history thing. I don't know. All right, so Lavender Pants says, I would say you are right. What? There are sirens. That's the sound of quick access to emergency in hospitals. Good luck having a heart attack in the country, right? No sirens means nobody's coming for you. <laughs> that is so true. I almost said that when you said that, but I didn't want to talk over you. Yes, um, you did. You wanted to. No, I wanted to, but I knew so Andrew would get my ass. Um, all right, Hollywood Tentacles says, culture, culture, culture. I can drive for 20 minutes and have authentic cuisine from every single ethnic group, from every Ethiopian to Thai, Vietnamese, Mexican, El Salvadorian, Armenian, Filipino, etc. True. That's why I was saying about uh, entertainment and all those things. You have all those things to your disposal. Like, you can have anything. Um, 25, wait, crab with knife, 25 to knife, I'm with you. A lot of people really value that. Nate says, okay, he says about some of Russ. Okay, Kai Kai, kind of like your name. I like the nature, so the country life is the way for me. Plus, like peeing on my tree in the yard. Yeah, I like that too. And if you live in the burbs, you can still pull that off. Um, Kara wins. Uh, Spirit of Whiskey says, Kara after the rebut- rebuttal. 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 I think Jared won. He convinced me of his point. Kara, you spent too long pointing out flaws in Jared's argument. Fair point. Um, Kara wins that one. Says Russ Cagle. 25 to knife. Crab with the knife. You can't overrate staying in touch with the real world. Hollywood Tactical says, I get every culture's dance music, every kind of music in general, every jazz. And you know what? When you live in the city, you do get like that. You, you realize like... Like, when people say, what kind of music do you like? I listen to everything. Like, and that's pretty common in the city areas. Like, in the country, maybe a little bit, but not so much. Um, Andrew Tool says, I'm giving the win to Jared strictly because it seems as though Kara's Rebuttal came from Rebuttal. reading Ryan's comment. Wait, what was Ryan's comments? I don't know. Um, th- saying that... Let's look. Where? I don't know. Oh, oh this right. Okay, you just okay, okay, okay. 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 what did it say? What did it say? You know what it says. He comments with the exact two things that I started talking about. Okay. Um, Money and family. I like every time I am voting against the popular vote. <laughs> That's funny. We get like that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Floridian says, Kara, I think, wins, but, wait, that one, but it's closer. Uh, Bree says, too close to call. Kane says, then deal with the city. Okay. Um, care for the win. You got everything. Mark says country for the win. Okay, so now in all reality, I do like both. I love both. And when you live in the city, you always want to live in the country. And when you live in the country, you always want to be closer to the city. People like people, but also we like freedom. And that is one thing I love about the country. Like my grandpa, man, I loved going down to Mississippi. I could go hunting anytime I wanted. I loved that that freedom of just doing what I want when I want. Now also, after a week or two, it did get a little boring. Like it sucked that I couldn't just walk to the gas station. It was literally, I said 11 miles because that's how far he was from the littlest little tiny nothing. And if it, that little place didn't have it, it was like 45 minutes. Liquor was 45 minutes away. You yeah. had to go to the next state to get the liquor. Like, so <laughs> anyways, all right. And also like in Alaska and stuff like that, you're really talking about really far in the country. So sometimes you got to specify 
how deep in the country are we talking? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, because country living... I feel like when I was, like, thinking in, in my head when I was picturing it, first of all, I was picturing kind of more mountainous country. I know you were. Um, know you were. But also, um, I don't know, I think I was picturing, you know... Rural, but not, uh, I have to drive four hours to get groceries. Rural. Right, right. More of a, a small community, but a, still a community. Like, you have a grocery store, you have a gas station, you're not having to drive 20 minutes for that Seems stuff. Seems like I just said, if you're not able to make your own fun, rural can get boring quick. Yeah, and that's one thing I'm good at. I'm definitely good at making my own fun, but Same. I think everybody eventually runs out of that thing. Um, that's why I like the thought of living with nature and having to hunt and having to, to build stuff because that keeps me busy in the thought of having to, to trap everything, catch everything, hunt everything, work on the food and cook all that stuff. You know, it kind of keeps me, my mind busy. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Um, well, what should we do for the next one? Should we do another knife one? If you said city versus city, that would be easier. <laughs> Cool. Okay, what was it? No, no, we're um, going to do another one. We don't have to do just knife stuff. We have tons of different stuff. It's between knife stuff and regular shit. Okay. Um. Let me, I'm just going to read this while you're picking. Andrew Tool says, perfect scenario as if you took a, wait, pan, what does that say? Pa panoramic shot. Oh, panoramic shot of where you live. It looks like the middle of nowhere, but 20 minutes away is everything you need. Yes. Still having access to all modern yes, amenities. I agree. Very true. Very true. Um, like, okay. My mom, she lives in a really small town south yeah, of Chicago. Yeah, but she has everything she but needs. But she does. Well, it's building That's up now. That's kind of how I was thinking, I, I was just, though. I was just what saying. Right now, it's building up, so there is everything there. But when she first moved there, the only thing there was was a was one block of, like, little storefronts and stuff. And it was, like, know, five minutes away or something. But she lived in a, sub, sub, uh, like a little subdivision that was surrounded by cornfields, like, surrounded in the middle of nowhere. Now it's starting to build up a little bit more. But that's still country to me in my mind kind of kind of all right go ahead okay starbucks versus duncan you made this up didn't you starbucks versus duncan okay i guess i should pick starbucks so the side you want I, i'm picking this time right no, I'll pick Duncan. You want to pick Duncan? I'll pick Duncan. Right. I can see your look right now. <laughs> I'm going to wreck your you ass either way. I'm going to fuck you up. I, don't, I can't really debate this, but I'm going to do it's my best. Starbucks. I will do my it's damn best. It's just Starbucks okay, versus Duncan. Okay, so the one thing I got to say. Whoa, whoa, that whoa, my, whoa, whoa. Oh, I didn't even start the time. Okay, start it. Are you going to go first? I'm going to. And I, am I supposed to? You can. I thought I was, I was asking. supposed to. Yeah. You went yeah. first the last time. Oh, like if we you, pick, we go first? Okay, right, got right. it. All right. Starbucks versus Dunkin' Donuts. Now, if any of you guys don't have Dunkin' Donuts, I do know that it doesn't run all the way to the West Coast. Um, it doesn't? Nope. Dunkin' Donuts is basically just like um, not more of a, like a fast food version. Of, of donuts. Yeah, it's kind of like a Tim Hortons, if that With makes sense. With a coffee shop. Coffee yeah. shop and donuts, and they also have breakfast sandwiches. Uh, there we go. All right, let's do this. Okay. All right, so Dunkin' Donuts has donuts. That's one thing. You guys don't have donuts. You guys might have some you know, crap-ass donuts if you do have Something donuts. you guys. I'm not Starbucks. You're all of Starbucks. I'm not Starbucks. You are <laughs> Starbucks. Okay, so we have donuts, and guess what? We don't have just one or two donuts. We have every kind of donut you could imagine. And every. also, also there's there's um some Dunkin' Donuts, like the one I grew up by, they actually made them fresh every morning right there. So they get fresh donuts every day. So with the ones that are bought out, if they're gone, they're gone. Like they, they're constantly fresh, and they can only be on the shelf for so long. And they got to throw them out. So you know you're getting fresh donuts. Um, they have coffee. You can also get breakfast sandwiches. So they have full breakfasts now. So you can get breakfast sandwiches, breakfast um, burritos, breakfast uh, full breakfasts, um, along with your coffee and stuff like that. And then they do cold coffees and stuff like that. So you have a lot more um, variety with Dunkin' Donuts. Um, you also have um, the, uh, there's different types of Dunkin' Donuts. Like, I'm specifically thinking of one, so I'm going to stop doing that. So, mm -hmm. they have the drive through just like Starbucks. They also have the walk-in where you can sit down and walk, you can walk in and sit down. But, I think the thought of the, they, they're constantly refreshing stuff and constantly, they always have fresh and they, they do everything. The breakfast, the donuts, and, you know, the cold coffees, the hot coffees. The lattes, the this, the that. That's my argument. Go ahead. I don't think this one's going to take that long, so. Okay. 
Maybe um, for you it might, because you usually take three minutes on one damn debate. So, <laughs> here, here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> okay. So, for one, yep. Starbucks does not carry donuts. They do carry a donut. They carry a classic plain I figured donut. there was something like that. However, they carry a much larger array of different pastries. So, you can get a donut if that's your thing, but they also have, you know... 25 other pastries that Dunkin' Donuts doesn't offer. Um, now, if you're going for donuts, of course, I'm going to say Dunkin' Donuts. However, the Dunkin' Donuts comes from Dunkin' It and Coffee. It's a coffee place, so we're talking about coffee as well, which Starbucks just absolutely stomps Dunkin' so Donuts in. No. Starbucks stomps Dunkin' Donuts oh, I in thought coffee. you said if you're, if you're going for donuts. No, I'm I saying went. the name Dunkin' Donuts comes from Dunkin' in it in the coffee. It's okay. a coffee place. Okay. I'm saying it's not just donuts. Their main Yeah, yeah coffee motif. and donuts. That's what I right. said. Yeah. So when argument. you flip to the... Oh, and also, by the way, Starbucks does have full breakfast sandwiches. I said that. Okay. Oh, oh you Starbucks. guys. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, Starbucks has breakfast sandwiches as well. Um, yeah, one. No, some stores offer more than others, you but one. 90% of the stores offer... One. Mm, probably at least tw about 20 different options for no, sandwiches. I doubt that. Literally stop interrupting me. You don't know. Um, okay, so <sighs> the next thing it, when it comes to coffee is that up until maybe, ooh, I want to say three years ago, Dunkin' Donuts didn't even offer more than one type of coffee roast. They only offered a medium roast coffee. They only recently started offering a dark roast. The coffee that they serve on a daily basis is somewhat of a medium blonde roast. So there are options for genuine coffee drinkers who maybe want, you know, a, a high or you know a darker flavor with less caffeine or a lighter flavor, more caffeine. They don't really have all those options. Um, the other thing is that um, the way that they brew their coffee, they put they use an old style glass coffee brewer on a burner and it essentially burns the coffee um, because they let it sit there for about 30 minutes at a time. Their lattes, you can't even consider lattes because the espresso machine that they use isn't a real machine. It's 100% automated. They don't aerate their own milk. They don't do anything handmade. Starbucks, though people think it's like a corporate machine in a fast food place, we actually hand aerate all our drinks. We have some of the best espresso machines in the world. They're handmade by Switzerland. We have all of our own roasts of coffee. Starbucks makes light roast, medium roast, dark roast, single origin roast coffees, uh, even blonde espresso, which is a very unique thing. And um, you're just not going to get that type of human interaction that you do at Starbucks. We uh, are actually trained people to have a human interaction. You go to Dunkin' Donuts, the people are rude as fuck half the time. Okay, so here's my rebuttal. That's probably rebuttal. <laughs> that's probably half my um, argument is that you guys are trained a little too much to deal with people, and that can be a negative because you guys are like constantly getting attacked by the community for something you guys did or didn't do, and then you guys kiss ass instead of saying go fuck yourself. Um, and I hear that from you a lot when you have to get these little things on how to talk to minorities and stuff like that, even though you grew up with minorities. Like, I think that's pathetic. Um, you shouldn't have to learn how to talk to a specific person. But also, the last thing, like you said from the start, if you're going for donuts, you might win. So, we have donuts. That's um. my argument. And for That's those of you that think I'm cheating and know way too much about Starbucks, I also worked at Dunkin' Donuts, so I know equally as much yeah, about Dunkin' I knew Donuts. Yeah, I knew she'd probably win this I know she all does know. about their machines. I know nothing Can I say a couple her. other things? Yeah, they, they also, it, this won't count towards the scoring, though. Oh, but, like, is this like court? Where, forget that comment. You didn't as hear if this. You, as if they can forget that but comment. But listen, though, they don't even pour their own cream. They have machines yeah. that do it for well, them. How do you guys do it? By hand. It's more handmade. Right. It's more of an Italian coffee shop. No, I don't know. They just, they, they, uh, oh. they suck. For coffee, I agree. Starbucks. I worry. Oh, but yeah. Why did you not bring up <coughs> pricing? What that you was mean? your one thing that you had against did me. Did I? Pricing. Yeah, no. hell yeah. You know how expensive Starbucks See, is? I know. I don't. I don't really go to, I don't really, no, I don't, yeah, I don't go to, I don't go to, uh, I mean, I've grown up going to Dunkin' Donuts, but I don't really know the price difference. Like, oh, this one's a dollar more there. I don't know. No, that. but it's like a big difference. More handmade machines don't get the Rona. <laughs> <laughs>
Love those. All right, let me go back to the beginning and start reading. Okay, well, so. Well, well, hold on. I got a comment on that comment, though. Handmade on an espresso machine doesn't mean more hands in it. It just means that the it steam. It means more hands in the it. The steam wand allows you to actually aerate the milk instead of it being an automated process. That's all that means. Okay, so, um. Jared in full <laughs> interrupt mode. <laughs> I know what you're getting, you were. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, the best donuts, in my humble opinion, are in the little ones like me, fresh and fair. Yeah, I know what you're trying to say, and I, I find that true, too. Little little places, like little holes in the wall seem like they're always the best of everything. I don't care if it's a barbecue place or a donut shop. Um, talk, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What the heck? Um... Okay, seems logical. He's talking about he's talking to Spirit Whiskey. He says didn't even know they made coffee. Uh, Starbucks coffee tastes like shit. I don't know why people drink it. Mark H says Kara works at Starbucks. <laughs> Still, no, I work at Target. But she works. At no, Starbucks. I work at Target. Starbucks in Target. Nope. No, Target. that's not how it I goes. work for Target. I, I do not work for Starbucks. Okay, what apron do you put on every day? My coffee master apron. Okay. Um, overall, I'm mostly a black tea person over coffee, but Starbucks would be amazing if they didn't Yo, burn Starbucks their brew is from black. being too high temperature. Okay, wait. Let me comment on it. Burn! Let me comment. Burn! I gotta say it. I gotta burn! say it. Two things. Burn! The black tea at Starbucks is fire. <laughs> if you've never tried the black ice tea, shut it. If you've never tried the black ice tea at Starbucks, it's really good. You should give it a chance. Also... Go to smaller Starbucks. If you go to the Starbucks that are within a Target or maybe not a large location, the larger locations, they use a different type of brewer than the smaller ones. And the brewer they use essentially has hot plates. So they brew their coffee and then they sit it on a hot plate. If they don't keep up with that timer down to the minute, it will burn their coffee. And you're absolutely right. Also, at... Also, so the smaller locations, we use uh, typical air pots, which basically the only thing that can happen to it is it get, would get cold, but we run on a 15-minute brew timer. So you're going to get uh, less likely of a chance of that happening at a smaller location that doesn't use the massive coffee pots. The other thing I wanted to say is that um, the... Um, as far as like people saying, oh, I always hear the term tar bucks, like it tastes like tar, it's too strong, it's this, it's that. Well, the main roast that you are going to get if you just ask for a coffee at Starbucks is the Pike Place roast. And I will admit that it is too strong for most people. That's what you're drinking right now. Most people find that like too it. strong. Um, that's Hurry the, up. Come that on, I'm is trying the to answer beauty these of Starbucks, though, you guys. Okay, Mark they, H. Hey, let me finish my sentence. Damn it, man. They have different. I'm literally trying to they read have, the comments. I know, let me finish my last sentence. So hurry up. We have it. different roasts. You don't have to order that particular one that they just give you if you ask for coffee. Mark H says La Cumb wait, La, La Columbia Columbia. I know I am because you kept talking, so people have been writing. La Columbia is the best coffee. Hollywood says Kara, you're cheating. You know way too much about Starbucks. That's so true. But you're like huh. way about him. Wait, wait, wait. I know. Go down. I know. Well, this is when we were still debating. That's the point. Do you not understand? We were debating this is what they said to us. Let's read it. Shit. What else are they writing for? All right, Q-Fiend says, Jared looks like he didn't know what he was getting into on this one. He, I knew that from the start, brother. Uh, Spirited says, uh, oh wait, Hollywood says, Fiend all of us just got blindsided yes, by Kara. Um, Spirited said, Starbucks says, the best little cream cheese filled bagel buys, do yeah, they? Those things are fire, yeah. Um, Roman Graves, Starbucks is fancy, overpriced, over-engineered coffee that tastes like potting soil. Dun <laughs> <laughs> Dunkies is just old school, good tasting coffee. Ian says, if this is a coffee debate, Kara wins. Um, what? Andrew says, so, Kara crushed this one, but honestly, both places suck. Starbucks and Duncan both have coffee and it tastes burnt. Duncan's donuts aren't good. Starbucks food is a little Starbucks better, but overpriced. overpriced. It's so overpriced. Yeah, it is. It's it is. So Jared overpriced. lost before this argument even began. So true. Um, Kara crushed this debate. I'm actually curious what Kara would say if she had Duncan. I know I almost did that to her, but I knew she'd freak out. I could see the <laughs> the devil in the Lavender eyes. Pants. Kara is officially employed and is paid by Target Corp. Period. I, Boom! I work for Target. Of course you do. Which, <laughs> where is Starbucks? In I'm Target. I want to answer this question. All right. Um, Kara, what would you have said besides pricing if you had chosen to be... To debate Duncan instead of Starbucks. 
Um, I would have said that their their um, standard roast of coffee that they hand out is going to be a bit more universally liked. Um, just because it's a bit more mellow. I do think Starbucks is too strong for most people. Um, I love it because I love my coffee really strong. But I would have debated about the fact that they probably have a more universally liked coffee. I also would have um, talked about how they've teamed with Baskin Robbins and you get that whole ice cream aspect. You didn't bring that up at all, but they have that whole ice cream ice cream aspect, which is really cool. Okay, um, I gotta read this. They're also comment. faster to get your food, and then um, Ronan says, I gotta what? say, the quality of Dunkin's has plummeted over the last 20 years, and I 100% yeah. agree. The, the Dunkin Donuts that I grew up on was they literally made it right there. And now yeah. all the Dunkin' Donuts that I know, they get them delivered. Like, they get them made at one place and then delivered there, and then whatever they have, when it's gone, it's gone. Like, the place that I grew up at, they constantly remade them, so they never ran out of donuts. They had way more variety, and they were so fresh. Now, I feel like they're falling off big time. Yeah. Um, they're trying to compete with Starbucks, I think, a little too much on the coffee aspect rather than sticking with what they know. Yeah, no, they, they 100% have gone down. CJ's. Um, Lindy Lou says, Kara, what would you have I said? I already answered that. Oh, did you? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, but you sorry, cut sorry, me sorry, off sorry. halfway through my answer, but I did. Yep. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, hey, Lavender, I meant to reply. Okay, that's not for us. Okay, okay. what's the next debate? Hey, well, La Lavender Let's get off fucking at coffee. Lavender Pants asked, hey, for everyone that owns an S35 VN Elementum, have your knives deployed detent lash or detent playing play? Mine, Mine absolutely is. not. Mine's stiff as can be. No detent lash, no detent play in any Virus. direction. And that's the S35 version with the thumbs, the quick stud. Okay. Um, all right. So it's 9.05, so we have time for a couple more of these here. Um, let's do a more controversial one. Okay, let's do a controversial one. How many people we got here? We okay. got 40 people in the house. You I'm... guys are all amazing, and we love all of you. Thank you for hanging out with us. We really do appreciate it. It does mean a lot to us. I, um, yes, it does. I, I'm about to be the one picking next for my side, so what? I want you to pick which debate out of these three, though. The bottom three. I want to do more of a intense one. Okay, let's do uh, this one. Okay, so I'm obviously going to pick no. This one, next one is trying kids as an adult, so meaning in the court system. Should you or should you not? Yes so or no? a kid does a crime and you he gets tried as an adult. Now, I, I would start first, right? Yeah. So Wait, no, I picked I start first. That's how we've been doing and it. You're, you're saying no, right? I'm saying so that I'm no, saying yes. a, a kid, um, and I'm going to go on, we're going to do this in a black and white way. I'm not going to do like some of the time or dependent on at this the or very, that. At the I'm saying a kid should never be tried as an adult ever. Okay. At the very end, I have a very tiny, little, tiny, short story. But okay. go, do you want to go or do you want me to go first? I'll go. We've been doing it where whoever's picked the thing has gone first. So I'll okay. go first. It's okay. actually worse to go, go first. Because uh, then you don't get to reply as much. Um, okay. So, trying a kid as an adult is something I think should not happen. Um, for a super simple fact, they are children, not adults. The human brain is not done developing the frontal lobe, which is your decision-making center, until the age of 25, at least. That's when it's done. Mm -hmm. All right? Kids who are 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, all getting tried for crimes as adults are being tried for... Um, for a brain that they don't have yet. That's not fair. Um, you know, when you take a, a child and they commit a crime and then maybe some of the crime is tried as an adult and then some of the crime is not, that's something... Oh, okay, I gotta stop. Hold on. Whoa! Whoa! Rolling great! Thank you. Thank man. you very much. Thank you. That's that awesome. is so awesome. We really highly appreciate that. I don't even care that you're interrupting me. <laughs> Thank you so much. I did not mean that like that. She meant because she stopped the timer. Thank I, you. I, I, I didn't mean that like that. I mean, I don't okay. care thank you. that we had to stop the debate for it because that's amazing. Thank you so thank much. You, thank, thank you. He said, sorry to interrupt. I swear. No, it's okay. I didn't mean that like it's that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. Anyway, okay, I, whatever. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I don't think that a child should be tried as an adult on any circumstance, even if it's, a, sometimes they'll try sorry. partial crime as a kid and then the other half of the crime is an adult. That doesn't make sense. It should be one or the other if they're going to pick it all, but I think it should never be the case. Um, the other reason is if you try a child as an adult, then they get the adult consequence with that, right? That's the whole problem with it. And um, someone who doesn't have the decision-making capabilities of an adult shouldn't be, um, 
given the consequences for that. Um, you put a child in jail for 10 years for an armed robbery, um, you know, that is going to be a huge chunk of their development that they're now spending in jail, which is my other major point is their development in these institutions is going to, you know, put them in with that really high recidivism rate and the chances of them going right back in and right back in is more. You're breeding little criminals when you put them in that situation. Um, and... I, that's it. Go ahead. I'll rebuttal. Okay, so first off, a lot of kids that um, that are growing up in that environment and are committing these crimes. So they're committing a crime, they're getting on probation. Then they're committing another crime, they're violating probation, and then they're usually going to juvenile detention. Then if they commit too bad of a crime, they at a certain age, they label them as an adult. Now, say if they're too young, they might charge them as an adult, but they don't put them in an adult prison. They'll put them in a JIT camp, or they'll put them in a juvenile detention center. So, they're still going to go with teenagers until the age of 18. When they turn the age of 18, then they go to actual prison. But they're being charged, so it's the crime and the time of the sentence. So I say if a kid commits a murder and he gets tried as an adult, that doesn't mean he's going to an adult prison. That means he's going to go to juvenile detention center until the age of 18 and then he'll finish off his time. Now, a lot of these kids, they grew up in that and they're, they're a full-blown criminal. Whatever they got caught for, you can be guaranteed they, and I'm not, this is kind of a, a blanket statement, but they got away with a lot of crime before they got caught doing that. So they are already full-blown criminals before they go to before they go to prison. So prison, they're, yeah, you know, it sucks going to prison, and prison does teach somebody how to be a criminal, but they, they got to do something with them, right? Like, they commit murder. Now, they have to do something with them, and trying them as an adult is the best way to scare other kids not to commit those crimes. Because if not, and like say they just get to go hang out at a juvenile detention center and they only get three years for murder, now you have a bunch of teenagers, teenagers like you said, their brain's not fully developed growing until they're 25. So what's worse, uh, a kid that doesn't want to go to prison for 25 years or one that thinks he's only going to get up on the wrist? Because he's his brain's not fully done growing, so he's going to look at it as, like you've seen this before, where an adult lets a kid take the take the the charge because they say you'll get a slap on the wrist, I'll get life, right? And everybody has seen that, so the kid thinks that, right? And I'm not saying he's gonna get that, but when they do, they're willing to take charges. So it's better for them to think. Or know that you commit the crime, you're going to do the time, especially when you're doing, a, and I'm not saying any crime like murder is an adult crime, because that's just, you know, murder period. It doesn't matter if you're an adult or a child, it's not an adult crime. But when you're acting like an adult, and you're doing crimes like that, and you're taking somebody's life, or doing armed robbery, and stuff like that, it's not going to, it's not like your next crime is going to be um, uh, car hopping. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to be breaking into cars next. No, you, you're going to go to the next level. So you got to stop them at the source and cut the neck off of the snake and get them locked up and let them do some time and then possibly let them go to school there. Let them maybe create a religion. Let them get amongst OGs in the, in the prison system that can maybe teach them to do better so that when they turn 40 and they get out finally, they can actually have a career or build something. They can learn something because a lot of prisons do help you learn how to do a... Now, whether or not you take advantage of it is a different story, but a lot of them do teach you how to do something. But a lot of them are just set to make you fail. But that's my argument. All right, let me get my rebuttal really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, so just a couple things. For one, um, if I'm going to say that children don't deserve adult sentences, I definitely should have a solution as to why. So if they're not going to get adult being charged as adults, the reason why isn't because I think they should get a slap on the wrist and run free. It's because I think that what they should do is reform the system and have alternative solutions for what happens to those children. So it's not that... that they get nothing it's that they get tried as a child and then they get the consequences that match a child which would be reform in ter in the form of counseling it could even be inpatient counseling i'm not saying that they shouldn't get taken off the streets but they should get taken off the streets and then put into an environment that molds them and helps them now you have a few outlying circumstances such as like 
you know, a, a kid that point blank shoots their baby sister in the head, something like that. I still don't think that terminology tried as adult should be used. They still should be tried as a child, but depending on the cases, it needs to be handled differently. I'm not saying no child can get jail time. I'm not saying that these things can't happen. What I'm saying is, is that no matter what the crime is, they need to still be treated as a child. If they're a child, that's what they are. We can't change that fact. And my very last point is um, also to just debunk one of the things you were saying, which is about the whole, like, Basically, if kids think that they're going to get this, it's going to fear them into not doing it. There's actually been tons of studies done on, like, scared straight type style um, discipline and learning. Mm -hmm. And it's been proven, actually, on a couple cir in a, multiple circumstances where um, doing that sort of thing doesn't actually deter people from committing crime whatsoever. Um, if that was the case, adults wouldn't be still committing crimes. People wouldn't do the things they do to get in trouble um, just like an addict, uh, who knows that they can overdose still uses every single day. That fear of something has essentially no effect. Okay. So yeah. now, now this debate, no, I'm, I'm agreeing I thought with you. you was going to rebuttal no. my no, ass. No, 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 I'm, I'm Ooh. agreeing with you. So, so now I want to tell my little story really quick because in all honesty, I agree and disagree at the same time, but I fully agree with what she's saying. And regardless of what you guys think, I'm just going to tell the story really quick of who won. Now, the, depending on the state you're in, the city you're in, the governors, the mayors, your, your laws, your whatever, it's different across the country. So what one kid might get in one state, uh, some another kid might, they might be completely different. Meaning like the system that they're going to go into. So some of them actually have systems that try to teach the kids a... Um, like how to work, how to do stuff and create like a mindset of an actual person that's not on the streets. But some places they don't do that. So they wind up going into the system and they go in basically like a, um, a CNA and come out a doctor in crime. Like, because now they're with real criminals. Now the story I was going to tell is I, when I was a little kid, I got busted. It's like 13. I got busted with weed and cigarettes, weed and cigarettes. They charge me as a child for one and then an adult as the other. Like, think about that. The same exact situation, the same crime, same everything. One of them, they gave me an adult, they charged me as an adult. And the other one, they said, well, we charge you as an adult for the weed. But since you're underage and you have cigarettes, we're charging you <laughs> as, as a child for this because it was cigarettes. What fucking sense does that make? So if it's weed, I'm an adult. But if it's cigarettes, you can't have that. Like... So we charge you as a child. So like the system like that, like I think they they do need to pick something. And I understand it's kind of hard because there's so many varieties of kids and so many different situations and circumstances. But one thing like helping your argument is that a kid that's committing crime, right? They're obviously on a wrong path. They've been raised wrong. And I'm not saying all of them. Some of them have been raised right to an extent, but they're just around the wrong people or whatever the environment. But most people, when they know how to do something better, they do it. They don't fall for the, I want to do the worst thing. They, they usually fall for what gets them the best results. So putting them in a prison, that's going to only get them negative results now, right? They're only going to learn how to do negative stuff. They're only going to be around negative people. They're not going to learn a trade. Well, they're just going to spend all day sleeping, let's be real. They won't spend all day sleeping. They'll be in... They'll be in a gang because they're gonna have to, depending yeah, on where you're at, like you're gonna saying. you're gonna have to be nothing in, productive happens. No, no, in in prison you have like sis like some, not not all. Like some of them put you on systems where like you have to work out, you have to do this, otherwise you're gonna get killed because that's how their system works or their yeah. gang or whatever. But but learning how to be a criminal instead of learning a trade is a major downfall for a child. Now an adult, right? Say you're 30 years old and you commit a crime. You've already got your mind programmed. The kid doesn't. So he's programmable, right? So you can actually take the kid, teach him a trade, teach him how to do something with his hands, teach him how to be better, show him there's better. And most likely, not most likely, a lot of times they will. But if you just teach him crime and then throw him back out on the streets when he gets out, he's just going to go right back to crime. So I do agree with uh, that we need a better system um, for juveniles because a lot of those wind up being the people that are in prison now for yeah. life. 
because of what, you know, they went to juvie when they were a kid. I just want to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Logical said crime happens when opportunities don't exist. I would actually argue that crime happens when opportunities exist. Opportunities do exist, and there's <laughs> definitely crime. <laughs> Andrew you know Tool. what I'm saying, though? Like, you see the opportunity, commit the crime. Yeah, Andrew <laughs> Tool said, but, you know, there's that thing in you that makes you say, no, I'm not going to do that. But Andrew Tool is <laughs> completely right. All of this links back to the breakdown of the family, and that is so true. When you have family that's taught you right, and you've had a dad to round to whoop your ass, and a mother that makes you responsible and stuff like that, usually you do a little bit better. Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but you do have a lot better results, and that's just a proven fact. Like That's not even an argument. There are studies on this, and statistics, it's just a fact. Um... Crime ha oh, I already said that one. Um, it's very true, and the prison system trajectory is only getting worse. That is so true. Um, 25 to knife, or it seems logical, so it's 25 to knife. There's a YouTube channel named Soft White Underbelly that interviews lots of rough people. Look her up on Eric's channel. He was a long-term prisoner. In you know, I, I, I'm i sorry I didn't read that out loud, but it seems logical. I know I did. I'm sorry. I apologize for doing that. That's what I need to stop doing. But I actually watch a lot of prison um, ch um channels, meaning like p people that were in prison, they got out, and now they're better, right? And I watch them because they're better now. They, they've learned a new way, and they don't like who they used to be, but they talk about who they used to be and they try to help other people that are maybe going down the, the same path or that are going to prison and how to survive. And I like listening to their stories because we have a lot in common, like a lot of things that I did or, you know, whatever, like situations, whatever. I can relate with that. So I like to watch those shows and a lot of them, you listen to somebody who's done time, like an actual person that was, you know, a smart individual going into prison, committed crime, going in, and then realized what they did wrong and changed their life. They're actually very intelligent people. Some of the smartest people in the world are actually in prison. Like the most brilliant people are locked up. I love Jessica Kent. Seems Even logical. She's difference. a she's good to watch. I relate a lot with her. Yeah, Jessica. So yeah. much. Um. Andrew Tool says, even the statistical difference in crime between those who grew up in a two-parent versus one-parent home is staggering. It is overwhelmingly staggering. Um, just like, and I'm not trying to bring minorities into this, but like the black community, I think in uh, the 60s, were uh, like 70% um, uh, had two-parent households, right? Now it's down to 30% have two-parent households. But the crime went up. I forget what it was. I think it went up to basically the same thing from like 30% to like 90%. Like it went through the fucking roof once you took the fathers out of the home. I forget the actual numbers, so I don't want to state the numbers. But it's, it, like he said, it's staggering what they did. And not just in the black community. I'm talking about in the white community and all communities across the board. That's the one thing that's the exact same across the board between everybody. Take the father out of the home and make it a one-parent household. They are more likely to drop out of high school, more likely to wind up in poverty, more likely to wind up doing crime, more likely to wind up in prison. Um, it's just a fact. Hey, since we only have a couple minutes left, can we do one more knife one? Yeah. Really quick? What do you mean a couple more minutes? We only have a few more minutes left. Oh, what do you mean? For what? Till what? Till it's Til like the line's over. It's 9.22. Oh. I, I worked 10 saying. hours today and I got to get up at 7 in the morning. Yeah, I did too. I did too. But you didn't... It, what are you talking about? I did that and then I got off and I worked here. Oh. Fuck, I work fucking I like 16 hours the, every fucking I day. I thought you meant it the distillery. All no. I'm saying is I spent time I did on my that app, and got off and stuff. Hours on my feet. And I fucking worked out this morning. Worked out. That's a choice. But still, um, though, it's fucking. Mm, try, it's dude, a good choice. I'll tell you what, wake up in the morning and work out. <laughs> mm, uh, See how it makes you feel. That's, I mean. No, I didn't mean it like that. It makes you feel good, but I just mean like. That having that um, that mindset of doing that, it's tough waking up after. Feel like, it's tough waking up and then you know just doing that. That's yeah. why a lot of people don't do it. Yeah, right but once you stuff. start doing it, you start to feel good. Because, oh my god! Like, yes. Even it, when I get up and I do early shifts, and the first thing I do when I go in is you know start sweating my ass off by you know lifting boxes, moving shit around, you know moving yeah. fridges to clean behind them, and all this yeah, yeah, yeah. physical stuff. Right. Um, I usually like, I don't know. I usually actually get a lot more work done and a lot more energy yeah. in the morning shifts than I do on um, like when I go in at like 11. And it doesn't have to be like a hard workout either. If you get up and start moving like that, like you were saying, start moving mm -hmm. good. 
I mean, it's not lifting, it's not a consistent, you know, muscle targeting type of workout, but if I start sweating, I consider that Work enough. Uh, not enough, what, but you what know do, what I mean. What do you want to do for the next one? Let's do Spider Co. versus Benchmade. Right. Um, Man, we have some really good ones on here we could Yeah, but we can save them. They're going to be too long. Let's just do, let's do Spider Co. versus Benchmade. I think that's a fun one. I don't like it. Why? Just, Let, well, let's like come up with a knife one then. You want to do a knife one? I want to do I a knife on, one. Let uh, them come up. You guys come up with a knife one, and we'll do it. Okay. If you guys as long as we like it. I have a couple written I know, down. But here I didn't like ones. them. She didn't like them. I didn't she like didn't them. like them. Just like you didn't like mine. What do you mean? I did yours. No, my knife one just now. Guys, give us a knife one. Let's just we can do spider Co versus Benjamin if you want to. Axis lock or button lock. Argue. We were gonna do axis lock versus uh, compression lock because that's spider co versus bench made. We can I do feel that. like plain versus serrated is an unfair argument. Yeah, it's unfair. That's kind of like whoever gets serrated is done. Yeah. Um, sheep's foot versus Tonto, Kukri versus Bowie. These are all the ones you had written down. I feel like. Yeah, um, no, I did because I got that from him. I actually said Kukri versus Bowie, like, um, machete, like, so a bigger buoy, a big buoy versus a regular Kukri. Ooh, Protech versus Microtech. Oh, that's, that's kind of, one. that's kind of an interesting but one. But I feel like you don't really know enough about them to really Fuck argue. Fuck, I it. don't. Yeah? Do to you? be able to pro argue Protech versus Microtech? Okay, then go ahead. Best Tech versus Kubi? Uh, I mean, we can do that one too, but I'd rather do Protech versus Microtech. Whatever you want to do, you pick. I love this. Three inch versus four inch blade. If I would have it. <laughs> that's his argument. Well, that's an argument. I don't just, think I could argue that. I know you can't. How would um, I? Chinese versus USA made. That's... How about Customs versus uh, High End Production? We can do that one too. We but had we that just one. did that one. Yeah, yeah not time. really though. Whatever you want to do, Plan. you pick. You pick, and I'll do it. Int integral versus standard frame lock. Um, yeah, I think I like Protech versus Microtech. I feel like that's one that is interesting to do. Which one? The Microtech versus Protech. All right, I let's do it. So. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? I don't care. You pick. Pick one. You pick. You pick and go first. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to, I guess let's I'll do pick Protech micro versus Microtech. Okay, I'll pick Microtech. Okay. Weddy, Fetty, Goey. Mm-mm. Uh, All right. Raise that and go. All right, so Microtech has OTFs, mostly, um, for their automatics. They do have out the side, so they have both, out the front and out the side, where Protech mostly does out the side. So you have a little bit more variety. Microtech also has, which I'm not saying Protech doesn't do custom versions of their knives, but Microtech works with a lot. Tony Marfion works with a lot of different great USA makers and does his version of that knife, like Strider, the, the Marfion Strider, the Marfion this, the Marfion that. He does a lot of different versions of it. And... It's all USA made, all USA parts, and they're very, um, you know, um, I guess USA oriented. Everything on them is USA made, all their parts, everything. Um, I believe, I'm not positive on this, but I believe all their tools are even USA made, but I'm not 100% on that one. That could be a lie, so don't, <laughs> I could have just lied. But um, also... They, they, you can, there's um, a more variety of them, so meaning like I, I believe that you can get them easier than some Protex. I think some Protex, they have certain models that are, are a lot harder to get. And Microtech, I think, makes bigger batches. Um, that I'm not positive on either, but I'm spitting You're saying a lot of shit you're not positive uh, Well, I'm because not... I'm, I think that's true, I think. I'm not positive, but I think. Um, Tony Marfion also has his, his son, who also has um, a knife... Um, Ah, man, I can't think of the name of it. Somebody say the name of it. So, Tony Marfione, there's little Tony Marfione, who also has a knife company. Her, yeah, Heretic. Um, Heretic. Heretic, sorry, sorry. Heretic Knives. Woo! So, just interrupted Jared! Thank you, Breeze. Thank you. Throwing you an interruption. Yeah, How does it feel? Um, Thoughts all jumbled. But, uh, but, yeah, the OTFs, they also have out the sides, and they have lots of different variety, lots of different versions. They, um, they've been doing it for a long time, and long time. there you go. There's my argument.
Alright. So, couple things, sir. Microtech, uh, I don't really disagree with any of the stuff you said, but it's not really about um, what's bad about Microtech. It's about what's better about Protech. So, the thing <laughs> is, is that the stuff... Yeah, that's what I just said. Nothing. It, no, there's actually quite a few things. For yeah, one, Microtech is a bit unreachable to some price ranges. I do know that they have OTFs and some of the things that you fall more in the two 300 range. However, I think Protech does some collaborations with other companies, and they tend to branch out and do those things more to where you can get your hands on something, like they did the Mash Drop, for instance, where you're getting in that two $300 range where you get to experience experience something from them without actually having to get the pro tech. I can't remember the last time I've seen Anthony Marfione pair up with somebody who's been done something in that price range or that's been a production thing like that. The other thing is that um, you know when you when you go microtech you have your couple flavors. I know there's lots of customs, I know there's lots of variations, but it's pretty much those same repetitive designs whereas with protech you have a lot of production designs they come out with lots of stuff every year and they have those high tech you know if you want to get the blinged out jewelry looking knives stuff like that they have also incorporated and used on multiple occasions the button lock the non-automatic button lock which sorry that's a win knife companies need to do that more protech does it here and there and i think that's amazing the knife that they collabed on was a button lock you know so i think that's wonderful that they're doing those things and come on they're known for their automatic knives of course microtech does automatics but that's protech's bread and butter maybe not so much otx but they you know are bosses at doing what they do and you know what they do what they do well and you know if you go get an automatic from Protec that it's going to be a good one because that's what they do. You know what I mean? And honestly, their price range isn't ridiculous. If you go to get the custom Anthony Marfione, you're spending a couple grand. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm sure there are some but there's some yes. a lot cheaper though. I know. I know. I'm you saying I'm talking about the dollars. most pimped out on the yeah, high end that's of the spectrum. Same thing with Protec. Yeah, but no, but their most pimped out is it, silver and gold and stuff like that. Some yeah. stuff, but I've not seen anything. G's. I'm d either Whatever. way. Either point way. Point being, um, they're both great companies. Point being, I think you heard all my arguments. Okay. So Caroline. that's all I have to say. Um, so that is so seems logical. Talked about um, it's the most patronizing shit I've ever heard about in my that, life. Like that video we did on. Uh, oh, sharp pain. Why? Okay. Breathing pain. With um, okay. the uh, Marfione <gasps> supposedly stealing. Whoa, ah! hey, Ian, thank you. Sorry, off topic. Oh, yeah, Thanks for anniversary go? gift device on Saturday. I bought her gold earrings and as a result, didn't lie. Very didn't good. die. Didn't die, didn't die. That's <laughs> what I meant to say. Um, that's awesome. Gold earrings, good choice. Jewelry is always a good choice, but um, I'm glad you uh, you got something because, man, it sucks when you're pushing for the time. I, di I didn't ever find out what anniversary it was, and I felt like that was the biggest question. He said almost 12 years. He 12 years? That. Holy shit, and I, I don't said remember that. that. He said he thought it was maybe the 12th year. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Yeah, when you get to them that long, yeah, you, that, man, you can't mess that up. Um. So it seems lots of people talking about the, proprietary the Tony Marfione debate stealing of um zt's design that whole thing yeah, that so we did a video on that actually so if you guys ever want to watch that we did a video on that subject and what we got because we like tried to look up the information and the story and everything and we talked about what we found out from that story <laughs> sorry but neither of y'all won this one it was just a bunch of opinions and assumptions you're damn right it was. That's why I said I didn't think that was going to be a very good I one. I wanted to do it because We only it was have one microtech. We've had one protech and we're giving it I away. I wanted to do it because it was challenging. We've played with a bunch of microtechs. Like, I've had uh, some Marfium Customs in here. Um, we've had SoCons. We've had stuff like that. We've only had a couple protechs, so I think we've had one protech. Um, well, two protechs. So, you know, um, it is what it is. You know, you can only go do as good as you can. Um, Protech is crushing Microtech right now, in my opinion. Microtech is almost almost solely that doing in-house designs. So, yeah. You know what? I do agree on that. And I wish, like, think about the I SoCon. didn't say it as smoothly, but that was my yeah. exact point. Was no, that, I got that from you. Yeah, that. you understand no, how I, I talk. I did. You know. Because, um, like, the SOCOM, think about how old the SOCOM is. Like, I don't, when was the last time they did a new design? Like, I actually see Protech on the, new, you know, the freaking Blade HQ video showing their new line. And doing like new they 
designs. They actually have new lines. Right. You don't see um, nothing ever from uh, Microsoft doing new designs. All they do is change stuff a little bit. Like, they'll do, like, the SOCOM in M390. The SOCOM in this. Yeah. You know, it, stuff like that. Oh, um, Sorry. No, you're fine. Andrew, I know. After Jared said the thing on Golden yeah. Diamonds, I forgot that they do all that stuff where they Engravings. actually use... Engravings. Yeah, where they do that. I'm, you know, when I'm thinking of it, I'm thinking of, like, what I've seen scrolling through Blade HQ, which typically you don't see anything on there more than, like, two grand from them. I'm not saying they, they haven't do, been yeah, on, there before, on there before, but I'm just saying what I've seen as far yeah, as... Yeah, and then plus, once you get that, it's not like you keep scrolling. No. Once you get to that section, yeah, like you're you'll done. see two like, grand, and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to keep scrolling to the $10,000. Right. Um, the only gripe I have with ProTech is they still use almost all 154 CM, not even CPM 154 on their stuff. Yeah, but you know, I, I know that's a gripe that people have, right? But let's be real. Okay, let's be real right now because fucking M390 is not doing that great in cut tests. 154 CM is a remarkable steel. It really is. It it literally literally pushes the limits with S30 and S35 VN. M390 isn't doing that great in cut tests. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's hit or miss. S30 and S35 VN, you know, that's a good steel, but 154 CM is a great all around steel and it's easy to work with easy to sharpen but yet has good edge retention now just because you say it's easy to sharpen and sometimes that means that means you're going to be sharpening it a lot but with 154 cm it actually has good edge retention um shout out to jared's phone bag <laughs> Staying alive not for long it's know, beeping it's like beeping. a motherfucker you right now hear it. i bet you guys can i bet you it's at eight percent right now does anyone else see that see what what, Douglas? I'm guessing you're referencing Douglas. Don't be fucking with us. What? I don't know. See what? Douglas's cigarette. ProTech takes more risks with new designs right now. Yes, they do. I still have Microtechs making them both, but ProTech is making some killer knives. I still own more Microtechs right now, probably 18 Microtechs and 16 See? ProTechs. But Fuck you, me, and assumptions and opinions, Andrew. Everyone else is saying the same shit I said. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Fuck ProTech me. is actually doing new designs and doing great yeah. designs and doing great stuff. I got to give it to ProTech right now. They are doing a good job. I, I'm hoping that it continues down this path. Stop! The giant spider on the plant. No, the <laughs> comment above it. Oh, not the spider? Look at the comment above it. Uh, what? Does anyone else see that? Are you Where? fucking blind? Who who's that guy standing? <laughs> <laughs> That's Douglas. Are you dyslexic? You always read people's words backwards. I just know. What are you that. talking about? You said who the guy? who is that guy standing behind yeah. you? It says who is that standing behind you guys? Yeah, but that's still the same thing. I know, but I you keep... I always hear you do that. I'm yeah, like, because I'm you, reading it. Are quite. you seeing it that way? No, I'm reading it quick. Okay. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. No. Um, 154 is a double win. It's a great. It's great for users and even better for makers. Machines easily takes wicked polish. And yeah, it's easy to polish. I think though, when you polish the edge, that's the only downfall I see to CPM 154 is that it polishes too good. It literally polishes the teeth away. I find that sharpening, you want to sharpen at a low grit, but it does take a, a nasty polish. If you want a polished edge or polished uh, grind. 154, CPM 154. Whew, that shit. What are you it. talking about, Steve? What section of the screen are you referencing? You're like, I don't what? know what. He's like, I don't know what it is, but it's there, though. It's freaking weird. What? Yeah. What? You know, maybe there's something. Tell uh, me what you're your looking screen. at in what he's section. He's messing with you. He's messing with I you. I want to know. All of a sudden, you see. <laughs> no, I just want to know if there's genuinely like a weird. No, no there's not. Don't I'm not fuck scared. With you. I just want to like know. I like 5160 spring steel, but you don't see that in folders much. No, you do not. I just prefer CPM 154 over CM. The powdered metallurgy seems to help with the edge retention and toughness. Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty much across the board. When you get to powdered steel, it you know it obviously bonds better. You know, when uh, for steel, so you're going like even with CPM D2, right? D2 versus CPM D2, even the stain resistance goes up, I think, two or four points. So, I mean, that's that's a lot. 
I, even though it's the same steel, it's just a powder version, even the stain resistance goes up. So you do get better performance. You even get better polishing, like I was just saying. It even polishes better than regular 154CM. So that's why, that's why custom makers like to use it. And think about it. Custom makers like to use it. So that says a lot. Usually custom makers, especially when they've been doing it for a while, they know the shit about steel, and they know fads when they see it. Like certain steels that, pe that people are wanting, oh, I want this steel, oh, I want this steel. They know better. They know, like, yeah, you want it right now just because it's out, but in five years, you're going to know better. Like, it's just that kind of thing. Like, there's certain steels that have been tried and proven and also can be heat treated e easily. It doesn't matter if I give you 20 CV, if it's going to be difficult to sharpen, and if I give out 10 knives, three of them have good heat treat, seven of them don't. Like, you want a consistent result. If you do 10 knives, you want to know 10 of them have 61 HRC, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you want to know, like, all of them are going to have good edge retention. All of them are going to be good and have good quality. And that, I think, means a little bit more than maybe I could get good edge retention, you know. Um, people should use CTS XHP more, in my opinion. I agree. You do see it on some spider codes. I got a little bit right here in front of me. You do yes, see it. Yes, there's a sheet up. It's a sheet. Um, this is CTS XHP. But, yeah, they should. Um, I... The first time I ever seen it was on um, Gillian te Gillian's knives. Um, Christopher Gillian. I, he sent me a custom knife to check out, and yeah, man, that thing, I mean, th that stuff polish is really good too. It's a it's a lot like 154 CM. I feel like or CPM 154. Oh, you're done talking. Sorry. I knew it was Douglas. Sorry, I was going to type my response. I knew it was something. No, he. D I could tell he was being legit. He genuinely was seeing some weird shadow up in the upper right corner, so I started moving stuff, and when I moved Douglas, he said it was something with Douglas. I'm sure. I couldn't see it, though. No, he, he legit... I could tell by the way he was typing. He wasn't... He was asking questions, like, is there a sheet up? Gillian, like Gillian. Christopher Gillian. Yeah! Not Gideon, Gillian. Oh! Thanks, guys. Jared, let Kara go to bed. God! All right, guys. I love all you guys. Thanks. I know she's ready for bed. I need to put her ass to sleep. Um, Cold Steel uses more and more XHP, but switch to S35 as it became harder to get. Yeah, it's usually how it goes. See? He's agreeing, saying it's gone since Douglas was picked up. I'm sure. That's somebody else saying that. Sure. He's like, for uh, real. I'm sure. I love all you guys. Thank you for Douglas all the donations. Douglas kind of sucks. Thank you for hanging out with us. Whoa. Douglas does kind of fucking suck. He's a little bitch. You guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out with us. <laughs> we will do some more debates because we didn't even hit half of them. We really didn't. We had some real fucking stinkers in here. But we, we were kind of wondering, like, should we do these? Because you guys might get pissed and everybody will thumbs down and leave. But because we had some real controversial ones here, we even had slicey dicey versus metal complex in here. <laughs> um, all right, guys, love all you guys. We will see you on Wednesday. Also, sorry. Also, I am doing Saturday. Sa sorry, Saturday. We'll see you guys on Saturday. I'm going to probably do the live sharpening on Sunday. I'm not sure if I'll do the mod or not, but I will be doing a live sharpening most likely on Sunday because that's when I can do it. Peace. Goodbye. Is it back? What? Is the shadow back? Yeah, see, he's being legit. He said, bye, great show. Sorry for the confusion. It was just messing with me. Yeah, I'm sure you guys were he's just messing lying. with me. <laughs> he's probably saying Douglas's ear shadow. Yeah, I'm sure. Goodbye. All right, guys. Love all you guys. Goodbye. Peace out.